the time being 720, I'll call to order uh, the Exbridge Board of Selectmen meeting for Monday, the 22nd of February. If we can all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Announcements. Chief, are you going to make the presentation on? Town manager. Town manager has up. We have a four citations, and if you would like to read them, they are they're uh, all similar, uh, but they are in your name, so. Okay. Uh, we have citizen commendations from the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Uxbridge on behalf of the citizens of Uxbridge, hereby awards this commendation to David Bianco, Peter Chenevert, uh, Michael Genest, and Jessica Genest for service rendered to the Uxbridge Police and Fire Department on 26 January 2010. On that date, the citizens joined a small group in rescuing the victim of a serious automobile accident. In spite of the risk to themselves, the, these public-minded individuals approached a burning vehicle, extingu extinguished the flames, and prevented the vehicle from overturning onto its roof until Uxbridge emergency personnel could extract the victim. We, the Board of Selectmen, thank you for your decisiveness, your prompt and brave actions may have averted a great tragedy. Your conduct is an example for all of your fellow citizens. So we thank you all, and is David Bianco here? Please, come forward. Further announcements? Members of the board? Citizens Forum. Mr. Ramosco. Thank you, Mike. I want to speak uh, this evening on the, um, actually it's on your uh, agenda, but I just want to comment, seeing I'm not part of the board, and I don't believe I'll be commenting during that agenda item. Uh, there's been a fair amount of discussion that's gone on, at least from the standpoint of the School Building Committee, of the Board of Selectmen, and the School Committee that I've heard regarding the uh, contract for project manager services, the design, build, bid, build project. And it seems to me that um, everyone seems to be pointing out why they're not getting paid, and are they getting paid, and where are we at the stage, and for some reason, I wanted to go down and at least ask some questions as I've done some research on the contract. And in looking at the contract, uh, it seems to me that the owner of the contract uh, is the Board of Selectmen, if I'm correct, because it seems that uh, Kevin, when he was the chair of the board, signed this contract on April 13th of 09. Um, seems to me that, that the uh, feasibility study portion of the contract is, is completed, and we have, in fact, um, uh, incurred the charge of $60,000 that's at that stage. And according to the contract on page 28, we seem to have um, at least honored that portion of the contract. Mm -hmm. The issue is, and I've seen Joss and Alessa come back requesting payment and on and on and what's going on and uh, the schedule's behind. And obviously it should be because on page one, the contract specifies uh, it will not enter the design stage until uh, they receive a pending receipt of a written approval to proceed from the owner, which is the Board of Selectmen ultimately having to take that vote in order for this to enter the, um, 
uh, design stage. So it seems to me that um, that we're up to our standard. We've done what we're supposed to do, and, and all payments are where they should be according to the way the contract's written. But I'm having a little difficulty because I'm, I'm looking at this uh, January 2010 report from Jocelyn and Lesser, and I know there's going to be some discussion on this tonight. But um, it, from page 28 of this contract, it seems to me that the uh, project manager was to receive $60,000. And then on page 2 of this January report, the architect, which is Gene Raymond and Associates, was to receive $120,000 while it was in the feasibility stage. So a, a total of $180,000 is really what should be paid to the architect and Jocelyn and Lesser during that period of time. And uh, we have no vote nor any written authorization to enter schematic design. But what's puzzling here is when I look at this first page and I look at the uh, $120,000 for the architect fee for the uh, feasibility, and then I look down to the object owner project manager, which his contract says $122,500, which is $60,000 in the feasibility and $62,500 in the schematic design. But yet, on this report, it shows $133,500 not 1225. I don't know if that's a typo. I don't know where the other 10,000 came from, who authorized it, on what basis. So um, I'm concerned about that. Because the schematic design brings 62,5 on the owner's project manager and 180,000 to the architect. So there's 242,500 that needs to be paid in the schematic design for a total of 422,500, of which 500,000, I believe, was voted on at a town meeting for both stages. Question is, why is it 133.5 versus 122.5 when the contract specifies that? One of the things that concerns me, and, and I guess as we enter this stage and and, and, and we keep hearing where we are and where we ought to go and what the preferred option is. Seems to me we got into this because there was a NEASC report. I don't know who asked for it. I don't know who brought it forward. I don't know who brought it center stage. That's not that important to me. But the fact of the matter is this was the driving organization that put us into the position to be looking at building this new high school. And the problem is, it seems lately, we haven't heard much about that in the ASH report. We haven't heard where we are, what work has been done, what deficiencies still exist, what monies have been allocated towards what's supposed to be happening there. I would like to see, and I think the community ought to see, um, an update on, on what's been done. And, and we ought to be getting at least a monthly report at this point, whether or not NEASC is important or not. To some, it's not. Some it is, but perception, I think, is that we ought to at least know if this is what put us into the situation, what's happening, and what are we doing as a result of it. Um, March 3rd, I understand that uh, the MSBA is going to be meeting, and at that point, probably um, given an opinion on that preferred option, which is the construction according to the uh, school building committee's vote to uh, move down to the Valley site and build the uh, new high school. Once again, um, no matter which way this comes back from the MSBA, I would ask that, and I've asked before, that as each agenda item comes on, that, that, that there be a thorough report to the community uh, on complete and accurate cost analysis, which is hard to do not knowing what we're going to build yet, but I think we need to be very careful on how far we go down the line with laying out schematic designs and costs associated with it if we're really not certain as to where we're going to go yet. But I'd like to see this complete and accurate cost analysis on a district-wide solution. It seems to me that the district-wide solution seems to be getting a lot more attention right now than just the construction of the high school. 
And I think we need to know what's reimbursable and what's not, and more importantly, what's going to be the tax, tax impact, not only on construction but operational as we look years down the road. Perhaps maybe even a, um, a more practical look at what a renovation and addition um, might end up costing us as opposed to side-by-side -side renovation and addition comparison to the new high school. The only reason I'm trying to be extra cautious here is it seemed eight or nine years ago where I came to the then Board of Selectmen at the time and cautioned on releasing the $1.65 million for the plan that we subsequently, and as of this date, um, we paid almost one, well we did, we paid $1.65 million. We had to take almost 400 and something dollars a year out of this community every single year for four years and we can't even use the plans. And when you think about that, I, all, I keep thinking to myself, we could have done some wonderful things in this community with $1.65 million in terms of some maintenance and some issues that really were hard pressed to, uh, to take care of. But no, we didn't and we are where we are. So I, um, I just hope that not only do we sharpen the pencil and be very cautious as we move forward, especially in these economic times we're in, and, and, and they don't look any too good anytime soon as we enter the next couple of years. We need to be very careful. And I would hope that this information can be gathered in this NEASC report, whether the principal of the high school, the superintendent of the high school, somebody has to keep bringing this forward because there may be a more practical solution and not lose accreditation. So I would ask that perhaps maybe the board uh, attempt to get that information out so we can have a closer look. Thank you. Okay. Do you want me to wait to address some of the things he said? Or well, or I, actually, as part of our agenda item a little bit later, you're going to address the, the, the payment schedule yes. and the various tasks, right? Yes. yes. Okay. okay. Anyone else for Citizens Forum? Okay. Town manager's report. A um, few items tonight. Uh, at the last meeting, um, I had asked you to set a closing date for charter submissions, and this was pointed out by uh, during our discussion on the charter. The closing date was set at uh, for submission of articles at Mar uh, March 15th, the Ides of March. Um, a review of the charter shows that that is not uh, not tenable. Uh, the reason is... Wait a minute, you're, you're, you're confusing me. This is for the town meeting warrant? Yes. For, I'm, I'm sorry, not charter submission. I'm, I should be warrant submission. Okay. Um, I was thinking of the charter when I wrote it. The warrant submissions, it was set at uh, March 15th. The reason it was set on March 15th is that was the uh, Monday following the 60 days. However, a review of the, ch the charter says shows that the 60-day deadline is hard and fast. Uh, we must sub accept articles submitted uh, up to 60 days, and absent an emergency, a declaration of an emergency by the Board of Selectmen, you can't accept it after 60 days. So we have to close the warrant on that 60th day prior to town meeting. Unfortunately, that's not a business day at town hall. Uh, so we will have to be open that day on a Friday to submit to uh, uh, accept submissions for the warrant. Uh, so I, I ask that you reset the closing day to that Friday, and we will simply uh, have someone here to accept them. Um, another issue, we you as you probably all know, but I don't know if. All of the citizens out there know we will be having a special town meeting. Um, a citizen has submitted a petition with a signature for 200, uh, two signatures of 200 registered voters. Uh, under Mass General Laws and the Charter, that requires that the town hold a special town meeting within 45 days. Um, the last Tuesday, which is our normal day for holding town meetings, 
is March 30th. So there will be a special town meeting on March 30th. The subject matter for this is a proposed zone change to allow uh, motocross. Uh, there has this has been an issue before, and, and uh, the proponent is the uh, former owner of the motocross facility. Um, the supposition is that he would like to reopen it. So we will be having a special town meeting at, the, at that day. And uh, there is discussion later on to open that warrant and, and uh, allow other articles. Those articles will require 100 signatures and if they are submitted by petition because this is a special town meeting, not an annual town meeting. Uh, we're proceeding with the cable contract issues. Um, the survey is in process. I need to get a, a uh, license since this will be done by business reply mail and that is the next thing that, that needs to be done. Uh, there is a cost to it and David is, is going to get me a check for that so I will be proceeding with that. Uh, Bill August is the attorney. I wasn't here when you, you discussed that. Um, I don't know if it's the feeling of the board that I need your authorization to proceed with contacting him. I think he would be beneficial. I don't have an objection. Well, the Cable Advisory Committee voted to proceed with if that. that is, and I will do so then. We've received a draft contract from, uh, and it's in the read file. We received it this week. It is pretty much a standard contract, but I'd like you to look through it from, and see from, from Charter. Okay. Uh, it would be their first submittal. I'd ask that the board review it quickly, see if you find anything objectionable. It's, it's pretty much plain vanilla, and it's very much drafted in their benefit. One of the surveys supposed to hit the mailboxes? Uh, assuming I can get the, the, <coughs> the license and pay the administrative fee within the next week, a couple of weeks. Um, if I could ask one other question, um, that special town meeting, is there going to be a problem covering the funds for the are we set on how we're going to pay for that special town meeting because it wasn't budgeted? It's about a thousand dollars to hold it. Um, Kelly hasn't asked for additional funds, but if uh, if we need to, we'll uh, we'll go to finance. I mean, a thousand dollars is not a great deal of money, and and uh, given that this is obviously unforeseen, that would be a reasonable request to the finance committee if uh, if there is a shortage of those funds. So the so there isn't by chance that the individual who is driving no, this did can't. not give a donation. Well, it would be a donation, and in any case, it, it would uh, would be the donation a donation to the town it would actually have to be uh, um, directed by town meeting to to the clerk's office to defray the uh, uh, expenses. I've sent the prepared list of street lights to the board and have forwarded it to BVT, uh, the Blackstone Valley Tribune, for uh, publication. I'd like to see it uh, set the date for the shot off about two weeks after it's published to give people an opportunity to, uh, to respond and contact the power company. And finally, um, I was reviewing the Wright's dairy farm contract on the 100 acre lot. Uh, that was a two-year contract with a one-year option to, um, to extend. And in reviewing the contract, they had until uh, December to send us the, the notice to extend. Uh, they didn't do that. I called them, and they have since sent a letter, but it is late. Uh, do you want to waive the, uh, the uh, deadline? I personally don't have an objection. Oh. Would a waiver of a deadline conflict anything with uh, mass procurement laws? No. no, not in this case. Um, um, 
there's always been a point of contention as to how well they're maintaining that field in the off season and keeping the brush cut back, um, doing other things, uh, planting winter rye or whatever it is to keep the um, erosion down when they're, not, when they're not actively growing corn. How well have they been in compliance with that? Have we monitored it? I mean, well, the, the expert is sitting in the audience there because he lives right next door and he sees it all the time. So, Rennie Ebeling, I mean, we, we you have more information than anybody else. Um, I mean, we need not ex accept this, or I can simply contact them and, and ask that uh, <coughs> in return for a waiver of the uh, uh, of the deadline provision that we. Uh, seek a contract amendment to require them to. No, no, I think it's in the existing contract, is it not? They're not required to. To, to plant do cover? I'm not sure. Let me look at the contract. Yes, it is. And they are required? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, how well have they been complying with the contract? If they want a renewal of the contract. This isn't a renewal. We, we would actually have to bid it this okay. year. Uh, there's no provision to extend it beyond this year. Okay. But if they're not in compliance or haven't been in compliance with the contract, then <coughs> is it up, is it worthwhile, you know, letting them continue to use the field? It's a question. Well, it's a question because if no one uses the field, it will quick, quickly start growing trees Correct. and be a burden to the town. Right. But by the same token, when we have an agreement in if one party is supposed to do certain things, we need to make sure they do the things that they contracted to do. So that's something that we need to look into. Mm -hmm. Weren't they the only ones that even answered the RFP last time? I, I reviewed the RFP. They were the only uh, uh, submittal. There are fewer and fewer dairy farms around, mm -hmm. fewer and fewer need for corn, or less and less need for corn. Uh, the next stage would be hay. But it, no matter what we do, it's important that something be done to keep the field from going into forest. It doesn't take long. Well, I mean, it's a situation where if we say no, then we're going to have to come, as I see it, we're going to have to come up with the town resources to plant something there ourselves to prevent it from going to forest. Well, I would have or to let it go to waste RFP. like we do with yeah. all government town property. So. Or I, I'd have to issue a new RFP almost immediately. Right. I, I, of course, I'm assuming that no one else is going to answer it if they were the only ones that answered last time. You, you never know. Yeah, that's but, I mean, an assumption, the, the, right? You know, every time this has gone out the bid, you know, we've viewed this as very much a win-win situation. Someone's going to pay right. us 3,500 bucks to maintain our land for us. So, I mean, it's you know, it's not that bad of a deal for the town. So, so what are you looking? Well, I, I mean, this is uh, this is a contract by the board. The uh, uh, the renewal was not timely, so um, I'm looking to see if you want me to reject this renewal as not being timely and issue a new RFP or, or waive the, uh, the date, the, the uh, renewal date, and extend it one more year. In any case, we, we do need to issue an RFP either immediately or probably in the fall. For the following year? For the following year. My preference would be to let them know we're amenable to renewing it for a year. However, we would like them to document their compliance with the provisions of the contract. Mm -hmm. Didn't they not even plant corn this year? Is it corn there this year? I don't, I don't even think don't they remember. planted it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the children know. of the corn this year at soccer. Mr. Evelyn would certainly know. They didn't even plant What did they this plant year? in what the 100-acre lot? They it was. It was. It, was there corn up there this year? Okay. They planted the whole thing. They all was out. So just didn't seem to be. Have they planted a winter cover crop yet? That's a good question. It's not growing. If they planted it, okay. you won't see it until late spring. Right. If it is it. But they. Is that, by that time, all the soil was washed away. I mean, we did follow up with them, and they did tell us. They, they said they were. Too. They said they were planting it, but. Okay. Um. Okay. 
the, the last date you can put in winter rye is generally considered Thanksgiving. But if you don't really get it in by the 1st of November, uh, you're pushing your luck. Mm -hmm. OK. See, in the previous years, when I think when this or Dama had it, they would put the winter rye in by helicopter while the corn is still on. So by the time winter comes, it's already grown uh, in the fall. Mm -hmm. It will hold the soil. Mm -hmm. That's what they, I've seen that. I didn't even know you could do that. Peter, was that a motion then that you made? No, it was just a recommendation. No, it was just a okay. comment. But be my guest. <laughs> do we need a motion? Do you want a motion or just a uh, consensus? If there's a consensus to waive the, the provision, then I, I will tell them uh, uh, that we'll accept this for another year. And, and then, uh, but we, we do need to ensure that they comply with the terms or they won't be permitted to uh, <coughs> participate in the new RFP. J just for the record, so we know what we're doing, why don't you just say, without objection, uh, you will notify them that, you know, we'll allow late filing of it. Okay. Conditioned upon them filing a, a documentation of their compliance with the terms of the lease. I mean, okay. I'll provide a motion so it's clear. Okay, okay go ahead. Um, <coughs> Motion to permit a late filing for Wright's Dairy Farm for the 2010 calendar year with the provision that they acknowledge in writing their requirements regarding overseeding. Compliance with Compliance with overseeding. Winter in the off, right, in the um, off season. Okay, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Anything else on town manager's report? No, that's it. Uh, um, the correspondence from, I guess, the Labor Relations Board on the SEIU thing. Oh, Do we yes. have a date set to deal uh, with that? Yes, we do, and I'll have to, I'll get it from my office. Okay. And, and this is because of the change in town hall hours? Yes. And uh, the concern about holidays that fall on a day off or something? Uh, oh, this is the yes. one where you get paid for not working? Yes. They, the position of the union is that when the, uh, they should still get the same number of holidays except based on a nine and a half hour day. And in the case of uh, Wednesdays, a, an eight to 11 day. Right, so this. It basically increases increases the number of paid hours off for town hall employees substantially. Okay. Um, and we have to go into only those S not other SEIU. Right. Members. But we have to have to go into discussions with the Labor Relations Board on this? Um, well there is a hearing. There's a hearing. There's a, there will be a hearing set. It's gonna be here uh, somewhere else? Has it been set? No. Has a date been set for the I'll hearing? Get the, I'll get the date. Uh, we don't have it yet. I have a an email. I, I can print that out before you leave tonight. But but has a date been set for it the hearing? It has been set. Okay, fine. It has okay. been set. Um, I just going, don't happen to remember that's, exactly that's what it is. Long I know we have a date. Okay. I believe it was uh, the week of March 19th. Is it here or somewhere else? It's somewhere else. Somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Old business. Closing spring annual town meeting warrant. We covered that in town, meet, town manager's report. Yes. Um, at your last meeting, you made a motion to set the date as March 15th. Mm -hmm. I just amend that I motion. I want to revise that. So we need a new, a new motion to revise the closing of the spring annual town meeting warrant and revise it to the 12th of March. Before we do that, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Since we're moving it to the 12th and you had mentioned that it would require, since town hall is closed, it would require an individual to be here, is there a reason we wouldn't move it to the 11th of March? Because we Can't must it accept it to 60 days. days. Can't accept it after 60 days. <laughs> okay. It has to be 60 days. Okay. And this will occur every year because uh, simply, although the the uh, date of town meeting will change each year, no matter what day it falls on, because 
of the length, the, there's no changeability in the number of, of uh, days in, in the previous two months, uh, it will always fall on a Friday. So this will be a yearly issue. Okay. Unless yeah. we amend the charter, and I, this simply isn't important enough to amend the charter for. So you're going to have one employee come in on that Friday? We'll have to, yes. Is, have you chosen that employee? I'm going to ask Tracy and give her a comp day. Well, that was going to be it's my recommendation. <laughs> so it's, it's, well. usually, <laughs> it's usually me and the town clerk because everything needs to be time stamped in. Okay. And redirected right. to uh, comp. And obviously, stuff. they will be entitled to a comp day if they have to come in or we may not make it an entire day. The, the requirement is we accept it on that day. Uh, but we may just open in the afternoon for purposes of accepting more in articles and whatever time they would earn as comp time would be uh, recompensed. Yeah, you, you say it's trivial, but you know, that's another you know, comp day, et cetera. Mm -hmm. that at some point, we need to really take a look at that provision of the charter and say that day or the following Monday. Right. Or, or, you know, whichever that comes day later. The, you know, right, or the closest business day closest so that we could actually day. do the, 50, the 59th the, day instead of the actual 60th day. Isn't the 60 day a function of when we open the warrant? No, it's a function of when town meeting is held. Town meeting is, uh, town meeting is set by bylaw, mm -hmm. not by charter, but it's on the second Tuesday of May. If you, I mean, I want to talk about this is a special town meeting. No, no, we're no, talking about the annual that we're talking about. Oh, about okay, okay, all right. It's like the third or fourth. Tuesday. I thought we we're talking about yeah. the. I thought the it was the town meeting Tuesday. Tuesday. It's not the second Tuesday. May 11th. Yes. Is the spring. Is always Tuesday. the second Tuesday. Yep. Mm -hmm. I thought it was and when you count sorry. back, it's always going to be on a Friday. Right. But it okay, really so only then happens then twice a year, so. Yeah, but I mean, I understand your point. I mean, it wouldn't be easier to write the bylaws so that it doesn't always fall on Friday? We could amend it, yes. Uh, right. to, the, we'll, the, the next available business day or something would be as simple as that. Right. Oh, that that's in the charter. That's in the charter. Oh, yeah, we, could right. change, we could change, change the, the bylaw, bylaw and have a town meeting on Monday. Than, right. yeah. Well, let's, let's make an amendment to change the bylaw for this spring town meeting. No, no, what we need is an amendment to change the closing date that we voted the last time. We're changing it so from moved. 15 to the 12th. So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded to change the closing date for the spring annual town meeting warrant to the 12th of March, amending our previous motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, the following discussion was a permanent fix to this mm -hmm. as opposed to. Right. This. And can we do that, get a bylaw together for our spring town meeting sure. to change that? We can do it as a charter amendment or a bylaw. Well, the bylaw is easier. Uh, that would require that we not have a uh, town meeting on Mondays. No, can't we change it to 60, like 59 days? That's okay. in the charter. If we change town meeting to Monday, the deadline changes to Thursday. Okay. When we're we have open. to get so rid of the stupid the charter. charter. <laughs> How well, long have I been saying that? In defense of the charter, <laughs> When, when it was written, we were open on Fridays, and fr it made perfect yeah, sense right. to have the deadline sure. on Friday. Okay, then mm -hmm. let's, make, let's prepare a warrant article for a charter change on that. I mean, that <clears throat> it just... Or the, to say, or the closest business day. Right, right, mm -hmm. just right, simple language okay. so that it doesn't have to be changed again instead of locking ourselves into a day. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Second. No, no, to change the charter? Well, we don't have to do that right now. Yeah, we'll, all, we have to draft it, it first. Yeah, okay. Warrant process. Right. So put that on our to-do list. <laughs> okay, Jocelyn Lesser's January report. Do we have anyone to speak to? <coughs> they will... <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, they were not able to come in this week. They have told me next week, uh, or next meeting. Two weeks from now, they will come in. Um, Mr. Masco raised some good points. If you if you review this, uh, the number listed is as the uh, for the feasibility study schematic design phase is listed in this report as one hundred and thirty three thousand five hundred dollars, which is not what it says 
in the contract. That's $11,000 higher. I don't know if that's a typo. Uh, if you follow it down, you'll also see that uh, it's, uh, this is hard to read with the uh, uh, amount with spent. With a magnifying glass, it's hard to read. Amount spent to date is $110,000. We have not paid them $110,000. We have paid them 60 because, um, as, as you know, there is a breakdown in the contract. The first 60 is for feasibility, the feasibility study. The second 62.5 is for schematic design. Um, however, there was a timeline associated with that which is no longer operative. The schematic design was supposed to end at the end of February. We were supposed to be almost through with both processes. That didn't happen. Um, there were issues and we are just completing the feasibility study phase. Jocelyn Lesser has not received payment since the October payment. Uh, and are, oh, they are eager to get another payment. I don't know if the board would like me to release one. They've been asking for one or two to at least have some sort of good faith uh, payment. I certainly do not want to make any of the last three because we would at that point have paid them for feasibility and schematic design and we wouldn't be nearly complete. So I don't know if you want me to want to authorize me at this point to make one additional payment or wait another two weeks to speak to them. But they have been clamoring for some yeah, I, I like good faith payment. Well, the, the point is, we would be paying in advance for a service that hasn't been accomplished yet. Right, right and I think that, that that's right. That's only if we pay all the amounts. No, we, right. Well, October, they, November. Your question is, your, your you want question a twelve thousand five hundred dollar good faith payment towards the schematic design phase. But we, they haven't done it, and we haven't and entered into it, so therefore right. we can't. But pay I, 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 I thought some of the amounts owing were related to the. Feasibility. No. no, we have paid the, the, feasibility, okay. that? the feasibility section is sixty thousand dollars. Okay. We have paid them sixty thousand okay. dollars. All right. All right. I thought our last meeting we had discussed that we were going to wait for them to show up and yeah. well, give the, us an update the before making a decision would, on that. Was going to be that they would be here this week, but right. they have not. Uh, they were not able to attend this. And, week. and I think we'll get some clarification next week. The the meetings on the third. Mm -hmm. We will know on the third whether or not it makes sense to proceed into schematic yeah. design. And if it does make sense, then the following Monday, we can take that vote to authorize them to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, right, so I, right, we're See, on hold and again, we, we talked about this briefly last time we met, but the confusion here lies in, in that it's fixed price deliverables but a time materials payment schedule is what it looks like. Mm -hmm. All it happens to be is installment payments towards those fixed price deliverables. Yeah. Right. So, and, and they had tied those installments to what they thought the original schedule was going to be with the mm -hmm. MSBA. Mm -hmm. When this date moved out, it doesn't change the fact that we owe them a precise number X for a certain deliverable. Right. Mm -hmm. so, so just because we've already made the payments on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So you know, I, we need to have them here and then until we're into schematic design, I don't see how you know we can authorize any, anything further. Well, they requested that I, I make the request to the no, Board of Selectmen, and I've done that. so. Okay. Um, okay. The, the other part of Mr. Ramosko's question is what's being done at the school to address the deficiencies? Um, and the estimate is $6.2 million worth of work to address those deficiencies. Um, that is in which one of the... Uh, that's... It's on like the third page of the one handout. Of the, yeah. yeah. That's in the long-term projects of existing high school. Yes. That's provided uh, under the new construction. Um, well, yeah, but it's, 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 it's intended to address some of the issues at the existing the deficiencies at the existing to building use it as as a building or to continue using it as a high school with full accreditation would cost 6.2 million dollars so but why would you do I, that I if you're not going to use it as a high school i think that was the 6.2 it fixes was the deficiencies that put us on accreditation issues so you spend 6.2 million dollars to fix those issues NEASC is happy 
with our fixing those issues, we don't have to build anything. Any ASC would be happy if we would just tell them, listen, forget about those deficiencies, they really don't exist. Because remember, they came from us, they didn't come from anybody else. Understood. No, I mean, my, being at that meeting, the 6.2 was in that the MSBA, they were not addressing the NEASC requirements. It was their requirements. They, them saying, wait a minute, you can't tell us your high school's not good enough for your high school kids and then move other kids into it. We have a problem with that. Forget about what the NEASC is saying. Yeah. We have a problem with that. Yeah. If you're telling us there's deficiencies in the structural integrity of your building, we don't want you putting any kids in but that there, building there unless isn't. you fix it. There, there weren't structural issues. No, well, when I say structural, I mean like the HVAC. If you're saying that the, you know, the air quality, you know, not having <coughs> windows, not having air conditioning is, a, is an I issue for your college kids. I went to high school and there's no air conditioning in the high school, so that I doesn't understand. impress me. Right. But, what? but those are all those are all maintenance issues. And under the the guidelines for a statement of interest, it's very explicit. You can't not maintain a building right. and then come to us and say we need a new building because we have we need to build a new building because we haven't maintained what we have. So you, you get into that problem there. Uh, but right. but Carrie uh, correctly encapsulated what yes, that did. number was, yes. which was if, if you're going to build a, a new building, yes. before you move middle school kids into the existing building, yes. we, you need to address these issues for us, yes. not for any ASC. That's correct. Right. For us, the MSBA. Yes. Right. And then that number was the estimate that uh, Raymond Design and Jocelyn Lesser came up with. Came up with for the okay. existing building. But if you do that, and make the building <coughs> so that it meets all the requirements of a high school, then... And you can use it as a high school. Th that's right. Right, because... Which is not what's wanted. Right. So... Because the point that the MSBA was making is that even though the, there are s some criteria that is different in a middle school than a high school, um, there are more overlapping similarities than there were differences. Yes. Gravity doesn't cease to operate because you move from one school to another. Moving right along. So anyway, the consensus is that we've got nothing we've got to pay and we'll right. talk about it in two weeks. And hopefully we'll decide to move on based on what we so hear. What's the date of our next meeting? Next week. Um, Okay, so it'll be after the March 3rd yeah. mm -hmm. MSBA hearing yeah. as well. It March will. 5th, you're just meeting at 515. And aren't we meeting on March 1st? March 1st. At 5 o'clock. Yeah. But that's, yeah. o that's only for the special town meeting. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, shall we move right along? Yep. Ansar Energy. Steve? Good evening. Thank you. Steve O'Connell, Andrews Survey and Engineering. Uh, got a couple of folks with me here tonight that would like to speak about this project pursuant to uh, my request to be heard. Uh, it's a solar project, which some of you uh, may be aware there are some incentives at a state level uh, set by the governor's office that I'll let the folks uh, with me here tonight. There's a representative from ANSAR, uh, Karen DeCarteret and uh, representative from the general contractor who is partnered with ANSAR, uh, J.F. White. His name is Mark Caruso. Um, the, pr the project is located at the pr property most people will know as the Bangmas Farm property. Um, about 20, 23 acres they've isolated to uh, implement a, a photovoltaic uh, program and uh, they'd like to share some details with you and uh, get some feedback from the, bo from the board and um, have some dialogue. And we won't take up too much of your time. We'll be happy to answer as many questions or as few that you have. Thank okay. you. Well, I have a question first. Mm -hmm. Why are we um, hearing this? Why are we here? Th this yeah, why are they, why did they come to It's us? not zoned for a power plant. Oh, it's not a power plant. It's 
It's electrical generation. That, that's that's power generation. You read the bylaw in the agricultural zone. It's not allowed. I have no objection to it. No, we'll Believe be happy me. to answer those questions. I mean, uh, but there's not. A, I mean, if there's nothing for us to do, right? We're not, we're not be informed. We, exactly. We're looking to, to be informed and get some feedback and general support. Uh, I will briefly say that there are there are state explicit state exemptions that pertain to solar and zoning, um, regardless of what local zoning allows and does not allow, this project can move forward. Um, there are other requirements that they have to meet that they obviously uh, propose to meet, whether they be conservation or other local permitting that, that they need to seek through the building code, et cetera. Um, but to address your immediate concern, that's, that's the response, is that there are explicit exemptions okay. for solar. That, that being the case, if they have a, <coughs> if they can by right have this facility in an agricultural zone, what do you want from us? Right, then why would we still have any? We don't need anything. It's, it's called courtesy. <laughs> we like to have, we'd yes, like to have, a, di have, like my to have a dialogue. <laughs> I, my initial request, Peter, was you have eaten before was, you a come out. was a response to uh, the town manager and Mike being the chair uh, was a letter of support. Uh, we've got some letters of support uh, from Senator Kerry, from uh, state representatives. Um, uh, if, if, you have, if you have the ability as a matter of right to locate in that facility, and the owner of the plan owner of the land is willing to allow you to do that, be my guest. I mean, I'd, I'd clap my hand and say, you know, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. There's a letter of support. You don't need... <laughs> that, that. The town of Uxbridge is not a private membership club. You don't, we're not a membership committee. We don't say, well, I don't know, I don't like to call that sweater, maybe we'll think about, you know, uh, please. You know, I use electricity, we all use electricity. Um, but Peter, I, I would like to be informed. I'm sure the community that's watching has many members that would like to know. But that's why we have cable access, public access. Yes. They can spend all the time they want with everything they want to do, to do a PR presentation. Anyway, go ahead. That's what we'd like to do. Please. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. We're, we're, we're a tough audience. So uh, I guess. <laughs> Ready to run out the door. Um, if I may, I'd like to give, give you some information on the project. Thank you. And basically, this is just an outline of the community impact, um, the environmental impact. And basically, it outlines the benefits to the town um, as far as tax revenue is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, and the national law exemption that um, Steve had referred to is Chapter 40A, Section 3, and I have a copy of that. Oh, you do? Okay. Sorry, Chapter 40? Chapter 40A, Section 3. Okay. Section what? Section 3. Three. Projects may not be prohibited. Um, they can be, um, you can require a special permit um, or a site plan review, but you can't prohibit it unless it's um, due to, you know, the welfare of the community or whatever. Please carry on. Okay, so basically what the project is, is under the Green Community Act. Um, this allows companies like ours to go in and set up green projects um, which in which we are able to then sell back the power to um, National Grid or you know any of the other Western Mass Electric. Um, so basically the reason for us to coming here tonight is to gain support from the Board of Selectmen. Um, I've been speaking with Mr. Slozik um, several times about the project and trying to get some support from the town because we have so many sites. Um, we really feel that the Bangma Farm is a great site for it, um, and it'll give the town the ability to, for basically bragging rights, saying that you're one of the first green communities in Massachusetts. Um, and if you decide to go forward to try to become a green community under the Green Communities Act, um, that's one step that you can take using our project, um, which will help you satisfy the five criteria. 
to become a green community. And if you have any technical questions, um, Mark is really best to answer those. I, I have a dumb technical question. How do you keep two and a half feet of snow from piling up on those solar arrays during the winter months? Well, mo most of the, they're at a 37%. Yeah, the, the panels are tilted 37 degrees. Oh, so they're not horizontal. Right. Okay. Correct. I'm sorry, it was a dumb question. It, not really, you know, no. not really. Plus they're warm, too, because they absorb mm -hmm. the is sunlight, there a, too. So. What's, um, is there an additional energy that's used to um, process the solar energy? No. So no. there... The, the power is... So, uh, this particular site will generate up to 3 megawatts of power, 3.5 megawatts of power, DC. From there it gets converted to AC, which is about an 80% correction, or a total output of 80% of 3.5 megawatts. And that's done with inverters and transformers, and then it ties back into the inter interconnect. Can you step up to the mic just so people at home can hear you as well? <coughs> The power, when it's transformed to uh, AC, is ties into the interconnect, which would be located at Hartford Ave, and it's stepped up into the um, overhead wires and would run back to the local substation. It would be metered from that point out, so it would be able to determine how much power has been generated. And what is the... Okay, so I guess the voltage is the... The reason why I ask, and, I, and before we came on, I had asked anybody on the board if they had seen 60 Minutes on Sunday evening about the, the power, is it power cells? Did you see? There's a new company coming out of, they're actually doing their big release this Wednesday. Oh yeah? And they, um, it's a fuel cell um, project. And the company right now that has both solar panels and the fuel cell at their location is eBay actually. They have five buildings with the solar panels that only generates about 20% of the electricity in five of these boxes that one box is about this section of the desk right here. They have five of those on their front lawn and that brings 80% of their energy by these fuel cells. Those are the fuel cells? Are they, are they energized by the solar panels? No, they're not related at all. And the guy at eBay was saying the cost and the space that the solar panels is taking up is tremendous for 20% electricity when we have these five boxes that look like just oversized but if you, if air conditioning I, units are supplying 80% of the energy. Well, I understand about fuel cells though. I think they're batteries. No, these are, it's a special patent. It was actually a very interesting, I don't have a lot of the information, yeah. but looking at, I'm just raising, you know, looking at the actual space and the amount of you know, energy that can be generated out of these. And they said it was 50%, uses 50% less electricity than nuclear. I mean, 50% less fuel than nuclear. So it was, I mean, it's an unbelievable phenomenon yeah. um, that they've, they're coming out with. And there's gonna be a big release, like I said, on Wednesday. Yeah. They expect one of these in every house by the year 2020, as far as a fuel source, unless of course GE or somebody buys them out and kills the patent, but Yeah, I'm just wondering you know. how, where the energy comes from. It's, it's, a, um, it's a special patent. They're actually using beach sand as the energy casings. Really? Yeah. It was really interesting. You should get the 20, 20 tape. I mean, yeah, the 60 really minute tape. It was yeah. pretty, um, but I just throw that out there as a, you know, yep. a different form of energy. Could I ask what we are stepping the power up to transmit that? 13.8. Kilovolts. Okay, so that's a, that's a standard transmission that's line. Correct. You're not going to require any any tall poles to. No, well, it'll tie. Out. You're right. It'll tie into existing infrastructure or okay. transmission lines. So it's it's just going to be distributed locally. It's not going to. That's correct. Okay. Yep, back to the local substation. What's your anticipated lease on the property for this? Uh, the the lease payment ranges from ten to fifteen thousand dollars per acre per year. Um, no, duration of the lease. duration um, is for 15 years initially, and then there are three five-year extensions after that that are available. How long do these cells last? They have warranties up from 15 years on. Because um, I know right now this is only economically feasible because of the subsidies. That's correct. Yeah, the American uh, Recovering Reinvestment Act will actually pay back the owner 30% if 5% of the work's completed by the end of this calendar year. <coughs> I just have the concern that down the road, if 
these subsidies aren't available, they won't be replaced and maintained? Well, um, it's going to be part of the RFP process. And that, this is all based on an RFP from National Grid. And it's part of the uh, Massachusetts Green Communities Act that mandates by, 20, by the year 2020, 15% of all electrical power in Massachusetts has to be generated by a renewable source. In state. In state, either solar, wind, or geothermal, or some other type of source that's renewable. So it's, um, it's in place that, that the revenue is going to be agreed upon. And by that virtue, the owner is going to maintain the property and maintain the facility to guarantee revenue. And actually, we reach grid parity um, between seven and 10 years where the note on the equipment itself is paid off within that amount of time. So from that point forward, um, you know, it's more profitable, obviously. But that's only because it's being subsidized right. by right. you and I who use electricity. Right. None of these green things make economic sense. That's why they paint them green <laughs> and take taxpayers' money to run them. So Mass Electric and other electric companies are charging all of us more money to generate expensive power just to look like we're doing something nice. But be my guess. <laughs> not, not you particularly, <laughs> everyone. <laughs> I, I, yeah, right, and, not but that includes me. <laughs> but it's, right. it's, it's and <laughs> me is near and dear to my heart. <laughs> right. The amount is less than $1 per month that the ratepayer will be paying for seven years, and then between seven and 10 years, our project actually brings the rate down. Yes, it's $1 a month for you. $1 a month for uh, wood thing. $1 a month for ethanol and schmethanol and all those things. I'm $1 a <laughs> month to death. But well, Peter, it makes all go happy. Seven years? Seven years. Yeah, then, it's, then you get your dollar back. And, uh, I, okay. I'm just curious, I know, for example, they're talking about decommissioning Vermont Yankee, and they have a requirement to disassemble the, the, uh, the plant and restore the site. Is there any such requirement if in 15 years when your, your equipment reaches its useful lifetime that you... I would believe that would, be the, part of, that would be part of the uh, permitting process. I, I've seen language right. to that extent okay. where it's, it's required that it be removed or if the, if the um, site has been abandoned for a year, that it would then be considered decommissioned and be removed within 180 days or a calendar year, things of that nature. Does the efficiency of the panels decrease over time? It does, yeah, it does. But uh, the RP calls for the, um, the efficiency to, to not ever get less than 80% over time. And uh, chances are, and I'm speaking on behalf of the owner and what I would think would be economically feasible to them, they'll want to maintain that high end of it. You know, if they've got to replace panels or they've got newer technology, go in there and swap them out, generate more power. So is the intent that we send a letter of support to ANSA or to the Department of Energy Resources? Preferably to the Department of Energy Resources to fill GDC. Okay. Well, I can provide you, I can email you copies of letters that we've received we, today. We, we have a couple. Steve's already done that. Examples. Okay. Okay. Can I ask a question? <coughs> Does it provide any permanent jobs in Uxbridge? It, uh, it won't provide permanent jobs in Uxbridge, but what it will do is um, you'll have related jobs during the construction phase. So you'll have induced labor. Away. Right, they do go away, but it is an influx of, of income, you know, for the town. Will, will our electricity paying residents in the town have any increases to their electric bills because of this being in town? No, not no, it's it's um, across the whole national grid that everybody would see a slight increase in their bill. It's We're not paying just for all of these things everywhere. I understand. Way. I just want to make sure that it's not, you know. Uxbridge specific. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The Uxbridge all of a sudden sees a $20 per household increase because of yeah. this sitting in our backyard. 
But the, what is the utility to you of a statement of interest? I'm sorry, I don't know. What is the utility to your organization of a statement of interest from us? Statement of support, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, yeah. right, I, I'm with Peter. I mean, I don't, this is a... I mean, you have all these letters from the, from the uh, emperor, from the president, from the, uh, and if you cut the a, right. What do you need a letter from us for? If you've cut a deal with the landowner and it's their property because, and... Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. But basically, the Department of Energy Resources and the, and the DPU, which regulates this, wants to see that the towns want the project. Um, so whether you look at it from the tax revenue that you'll be receiving, um, you can probably guarantee somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of the total lease payment per year. So, so on, the one, on the one hand, we have a state law that says, forget about zoning. You, you have can have, have it. it. Okay? And on the other hand, the same state government is saying, well, we want to know if the towns want it. If they want that information from us, why did they adopt that provision of the law? Well, that was adopted separately from yeah, I know that. the RFP process. Now, this is like 40B for power generation. I mean, they you know, yeah. kind of do whatever they want but to do. The, right? the, the right. But what's in it for us <coughs> is the, the increased tax revenue on the value of the solar panels. Yes. Right? Yeah. Which will be offset by what we're already paying and have been paying an increased electricity cost. Um, is the monies that we're collecting off that property, is the solar is the taxes higher with the solar panels, or could we actually be taking a decrease in the tax value of that property? If it's agricultural land, we'll see an increase. We're going to see an okay. Just just asking the question. So we, we're going to see an we, increase. In we the see property. very little revenue on agricultural land. I, I guess one thing that strikes me is the exemplars that are given here, are kind of filled with effusiveness and hyperbole, and whoever signs it probably won't understand what it is. There's I mean, it's, we, we can draft our own. We can draft our own. Okay. I like the the, um, the governor, the nice governor, says that he wants 15% um, of utilities energy production must come from in-state renewable sources by the year 2020, of course, which is all, always after the government <laughs> 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 the same language used in reducing the deficit, right? I guarantee I'm going to reduce the deficit <laughs> 10 years after my term. But wouldn't it have the same effect if we increase the size of the dairy herds and capture the methane and use that for energy yes, we generation? Could. Yeah, we could. Actually, there isn't any dairy herd there anymore. Mm. Okay. Can I ask another question? Go ahead. Um, are you going to ask for a TIF? Actually, for financing? No. They're financing. We're financing already. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but Bagmas well, may. Is, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. yeah but Bagmas may. The the owners huh? of the property. Oh well, no, that's a question that should be asked. People right. can I mean, ask for all they want. Uh, <laughs> I represent them. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, because they're talking about how this could generate additional revenue, and then if they come back and ask. Yeah. Okay, so do we have a motion of support for the project? Okay. Before you go there, so the monthly lease payment is approximately how much? It's a yearly. A oh, yearly lease? Right. It's okay. between ten and fifteen thousand dollars per usable acre per year. And there's 20, 23, 23 acres. 23. So, 23. so you're looking at a quarter million dollars a year lease, roughly. And we should expect to see, you said, roughly 20% of that right. amount would. No, 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 no. The, the lease has nothing to do with the tax revenue of the town. It does. It does. Because the, the lease payment is a gross lease payment. Yeah. Um, and because there's no precedent yet as far as how, how these things are taxed, um, it's really going to be between your town, you know, your assessor, and um, the landowner as well as um, Well, the, the photo cells are business property which mm -hmm. gets taxed for excise tax, do they not? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. right. They're not, they're not really sure yet just because none of these projects have actually been implemented. So. 
Hmm. So under that theory, we could end up not getting any additional tax depending on what mass general law comes up and it doesn't allow us to tax or tax. Yeah. That's We're I mean, if it hasn't, if there's no precedent setting that we actually have well, it's, it's, money it's, in our It's hand. business equipment. Excise tax is applied well, to business they could, equipment. But they could exempt it, though. But the, Ooh, the, our legislature would take money yeah, away from us? Yeah, there's other things Come they on. exempt. Well, the owner the, of the business would not allow that mm -hmm. to happen. There would be a split for the town because he wants the town to be happy with the project. But if he doesn't have to have our permission, then it doesn't matter. But you do have, we do have to have your permission. We do. We would not come into the town. If, if you were opposed to the project, we would not come into the town. We would choose another town. Um, Good. We won't give you <laughs> You go away, and then I'll go to the electric company and say, hey, I'll put up the panels, and I don't, won't ask permission of the town. <laughs> and I would. And he would. Right. <laughs> You've got quite a bit of land. Huh? You've got quite a bit of land. Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> In fact, I want to walk on my land. I don't want to walk on the solar panel. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Only because I'm putting in a photovoltaic system on my home right now. That's fact. You getting subsidy too, Harry? Well, no, no, no. No, but he's going to get taxed. I'll take it if you want to bring it. Uh, but the tax laws. I don't know if they're any different for municipalities than they are for individuals, but I know the tax law is such that for 20 years uh, they can't increase an assessment on my home because of the system, because it falls right. under the credit and the renewable energy. So, in other words, there is no increased revenue because I'm making my house more efficient and, and worth more, but the town can't assess it for 20 years. So I don't know how that pertains to municipalities, but there may be something that, that a little different for communities, but that's the way it works for individuals. Well, but, but Harry, if I'm not mistaken, they can't increase the assessment of your home based upon the presence of that the panels. Right. But natural appreciation of your home would, would not yeah. be any different than anybody else's home. Well, exactly. Right. Exactly. But because they couldn't the inflate fact, the appreciation of your home right. because of the presence right. of the panels. Because I have to right. come down, I had to come down and get a building permit. It was $126 to get a building permit to put the system on. But now if the assessors come in and take pictures, say, oh, that system's on, this house is worth uh, $75,000 more, so let's get $75,000 more of tax revenue. You can't do that for 20 years. Right. That's the way the law reads. Right. And right. they can't charge any sales tax on all the equipment as well, and that's, that's exempt from the act as well. Well, and, and that's right. And I think that, that that's my concern, is that we're not going to get an additional tax benefit from this. Well, you because need an accountant to give you, or you need somebody that, that's really... But, uh, but if it's not costing the town anything to put in, any revenues we get are nice to have, right? I understand that, but to give so the, the presentation absence, to think that we're maybe getting several hundred thousand and we're not getting that, you understand what I'm saying? I, I mean, it, right, it's not our property, but right. to give the presentation that we could be getting a several hundred thousand dollars a year may not be accurate because that's one of the reasons why <coughs> businesses go solar and go for these energy green is because they do get federal and state credit right, right, right up front. Exactly. Right up for, for construction. Right, right. right. Yeah, that's with construction. I don't know if that would apply, uh, how that would apply as, as a business. I mean, venture. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's, I mean, What's the business there's got to be a reason. In, in, in this community, I don't even there's know. There's no separate tax. There's no separate tax, right. But, you know, there, there has to be a benefit for these businesses to doing the initial outlay. Yes, it's pleasing to Al Gore. And then there's more Our than just that. companies are obligated to have certain percentage from renewable sources. Right. So they go out and make these deals, the best deal they can, but they still have to do, they have to meet that criteria, and that's built into the rate that all of us pay. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I can tell you from experience, some of the things recently, legislation that has taken place, um, and correct me if, if I'm wrong, I think as of December 1st, state legislation required that National Grid or other power companies purchase the uh, electricity back at retail. I mean, that's a huge, yes. you know, huge step that was taken. I mean, all of a sudden you've got that, you know, they're charged, they're paying three cents a kilowatt hour, and now they've got to pay you 18. And so that, that's a huge incentive alone. 
and then they established the Renewable Energy Credits, RECs. I believe this is <coughs> per installation. So I've seen situations where companies are going, they're knocking on doors and say, hey, you know, uh, we'll, we'll sign a contract with you for, for your electricity rate for 15 or 20 years. If you let us put these panels on your roof, we'll maintain them, we'll have a contract. And the people have a peace of mind that know that they're going to pay, you know, 10 cents a kilowatt hour for 20 years. It, it, you know, it's a risk that they take. It's kind of like the invitations we all get about for locking in a, at the electricity prices from other companies like Dominion and, and things of that. So there's a peace of mind of, of knowing that you're going to pay a certain amount of electricity for 20 years. But these companies who are going on knocking on door to door, if they get 20 or 50 or 100 households to sign up, they get $600 in renewable, in renewable energy credits. Is that a per year or is that a one time? I think it's, a one time. it's a one time. So from a business venture, there are a lot more incentives that just came into play in the last several months and make it worth their while. Now to address your concern about taxes, um, I mean, I, I believe we'll look into the obligation or the ability for the town to receive taxes, but I believe what they're telling you tonight is they're making a, you know, uh, a commitment to having that, that you know, sharing that revenue and in, in what they outline in their report. So I know you're concerned about their obligation, but they're telling you that they will. Okay. Can we negotiate a pilot a payment in lieu of taxes agreement um, for the site? I, I would not. I, I would not be in favor of that. It's, you know, the, the owner of the property has the absolute right to maximize the use of his property in every lawful way. This apparently is a lawful way. So I'm not going to hold up the owner. You know, it's like saying any business, we want you to pay us money. Um, but keep in mind, it, it's wonderful for the recipient that the power company has to buy the power at retail. But where does a power company get the money to pay them? From no, no. you and I. <laughs> Businesses do not pay taxes. Taxes are always paid by the consumer. The business is just a middleman. So we are paying Mass Electric retail so they can turn around and give these people those retail payments. It's, I mean, there's a bigger picture. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it depends on where you stand on renewable energy resources. I mean, if we can get 15% of our electricity from renewable resources, then that's 15% less we're using from fossil fuels, fuels and other resources. I'm perfectly so happy obviously that comes getting at a my cost. fuel from fossil fuels. But that's exact, so that's where you stand, and I, and I respect that completely. And, but it, it's, everything comes at a cost, and there are people who uh, you know, will step up and take advantage of certain opportunities. Like, Nothing wrong with like that. Like good, good business ventures do. And, uh, Nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Good. Speaking of stepping up, are there any communities that have, you've made the same proposal to that are on board with it? Yes. Um, Bellingham, Sutton, Sturbridge, Spencer, Westminster, Hubbardston. Um, we've been to Seahawks. So that's the list I would say yes. you have of. Have you broken ground anywhere yet? Yes. Broken ground? No, anyway. no, no. It's actually. Um, let me clarify that a little bit. It's it's a uh, it's a proposal that went in. There's going to be other other ventures that are going after the same type of work as well. All right. So what we have to do now is we have to wait while this proposal gets reviewed. We'll know sometime in early May whether or not our group has been shortlisted, and then if we proposal are, to National Grid to National Grid, correct. And if we are able to negotiate a contract with them at that point, we're probably looking at a fully executed contract sometime in the middle of July. And your proposal includes not particular towns, but a group of towns. No, it actually. A group it, of it, generating it, generated capacity. It, it includes specific sites. Like, okay. for, for, for example, for, for Uxbridge, we already put in an interconnect application to okay. National Grid and invested $2,500 just to get the ball rolling yeah. with this community. OK. Um. On your map, you have Uxbridge times two, so you have another site in mind besides the Bagma Farm. And there, within our there is orders. another site um, on Millville Road that we have under a letter of intent. Um, I don't know that we've done any more than that. We have a we How have about a the hundred acre lot. There's, there's a there's a drawing development. Yeah. On that. yeah. About the hundred acre lot. What's wrong with that? The um, part of, part of the <laughs> bigger, <laughs> we were talking about that. bigger isn't bigger isn't always better. So 100 acre lot 
may generate too much power. It may, right. it may not be able you to tie back into the substation. You don't have to utilize the entire lot. Oh, no. I, I understand that. I understand that. Right, you can't but have if it pays more field. than 3500 a year for the area that's covered with corn right now, <laughs> and guaranteed to maintain it, we can work something out. I'm here. serious. Yeah. We don't have to worry yeah. about the uh, overseeding men. Wind farm feed, that would be the best of it. You could have both, wind and um, solar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if there's distribution up there. Really yeah, that distribution is available, sure. Yeah, National Grid is good. Stuff that goes 13,000 volts. Is, well, well, that's what I have going down to my house. So, anyway, do we have a motion to support the project? Has there been any towns that have turned you down? No. I, I don't know what that means to support the project. Do we have, do we have a, a motion to now. send a letter to That's what I mean. Energy. I want to see the letter first before I'm signing on. I, I've been That's stung true. already by the letter of support we sent for the rodeo, and now it comes back to us in the fact of, you know, when they go to the ZBA, look, we have the letter of support from the Board of Selectmen, and all we said was <laughs> that we have no objection to the thing, um, yeah. you know, but it doesn't, it's not allowed by zoning, and we see what happened there, so. Yeah, but I, we didn't draft that letter. They can write whatever they want to write. No, no. no it was a letter we from the, the letter. Board of Selectmen yes. to oh, Mr. Jakes, yeah. supporting in principle the idea of the rodeo. Now, if somebody wants to construe that as, as our coercing the ZBA into doing something, then I really don't think the ZBA is coercible. Right, right. Over a yeah. letter that's signed by the Board of Selectmen. It's not a question of coercing. It's just you look at the letter and you say, oh, boy. You know. But anyway, more on that later. Um, so I, anyway, I, I we won't vote on a letter of support until I first see the letter. Okay. Hmm? Mm -hmm. No, no, we'll craft a letter and we'll put it on our next agenda and see. Well, that, that's is. just my opinion. I'm, I'm only one out of four. I'm uh, open five, to that. I, I think that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have a consensus that we'll draft something up and we'll look at it next time. Have it on our next agenda. Sure. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay. But take another look at oh, the point 100 of clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. That's the condition. Right. We wouldn't be able to do it for the town, but we can certainly look at it. We, we have a, by, a, by next a, agenda, you mean the next regular meeting or the special meeting? meeting. Okay. <laughs> so I don't think there'll be a full board at that oh, special okay. meeting. Next regular meeting on the... Uh, the fifth, is it, or the eighth? The eighth. The eighth. For our next eighth. meeting. The eighth. The eighth. Fifteen. Right. Okay. <coughs> We're meeting way too many times in March. We're meeting the first, the eighth, the fifteenth, the twenty-second, and the thirtieth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got John Kerry and Paul Kajelski. Without, without mentioning what's going good. on with this specifically, this green power act is a disaster. Because we have a we have a, a New England power market, and this is flies in the face of the concept. Okay. Acquiring Massachusetts produced energy. Okay, spring annual town meeting procedures. These are discussions that we held in reviewing the requirements of the charter as to who can put articles on a warrant. <coughs> that. There's no question about that, is it? Well, we have had previous warrants with articles ascribed to individuals that did not have authorization to put articles on the warrant. The, the Board of Selectmen creates the warrant. Correct. Under the charter, the Board of Selectmen is obligated to put on the warrant um, articles submitted by <coughs> multiple member bodies Correct. or elected um, Offices, right. okay, of which there were very few. The Board of Selectmen is free to put any uh, other article it wants on the warrant. Mm, that's a matter of interpretation. No, it isn't. It isn't. It's very clear. That, um, but they are Selectmen's articles. They're not the uh, Water Department's articles. They, they, they can be a water, a, an article submitted by the Water Department, but placed the on the warrant, by vote of the Board of Selectmen. But the warrant will reflect the article as a Board of Selectmen article. 
That's okay, either way. There's nothing in the charter that says how an article has to be um, titled on a warrant. There isn't. I guess I'm confused. So is we, we have had We have had articles where the sponsor was the, town the chief of police, the head of the water department, the or the manager. town manager. Okay. When they should be, the chief of police should come before this board and ask this board to put an article on the warrant. Which, which he does. Met. Which he does, because if we don't vote for it to go on, then it, it wouldn't go, go on. on. So when we vote... We vote for it yeah. without the chief of police coming here and saying, would you kindly put this on the warrant? I mean, it, the warrant's well, pretty how, clear How does this, it come so to you, us? Yep. Through the town manager. Right. The, the warrant's pretty clear on this. I mean, the, the, the Board of Selectmen shall include on the warrant for annual town meeting, subject matter of all petitions which have been received by, you know, 60 or more days before, blah, 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 okay? Shall not include in any such warrant subject matter of any petition which has been received by it after said date, mm -hmm. okay? So it directs us what we, we shall, which is obligatory, include. It's silent on what we may include. Therefore, it, it, we may include that anything that we want because we, right. it's our warrant. That's the state law. I mean, I think I it's getting, I don't know. I think it's just. Uh, I don't see what has been injured by the you know, who's been injured by the process and the way that it's gone. It's not a question of being injured. It, it's helpful because if you see an article and it, if they all say by the Board of Selectmen, unless it's a petition article, if it's said by the police chief or the highway department or something, then if you have a question, you know where to go and say, gee, tell me more about this. Rather than coming to the Board of Selectmen saying, what's this article? Well, gee, I don't know. We put it on at the request of so-and-so. Uh, I suppose the way to address that is to say sponsored by the Board of Selectmen at the request of whoever the... You uh, can do that if you want to add words. Um, the, the fact that it's, it's on the warrant to be voted on by the town says that, that it's been placed there by the Board of Selectmen. So other than petition articles, we have full discretion as to whether or not we're going to place anything on. Well, petition well, articles yeah, I mean, and like the town office, yeah, yeah, and right, so forth. No, yeah. But, right. And then once it comes to us, the only my understanding is the only the only ones we cannot change are the petition articles. We can't change those. But well, like for instance, if the police chief bring one, and I think we did this last time, didn't the police was it the police chief that brought us the warrant article, and we didn't like the way it was phrased, so we changed it. Yeah, we because we had that, that complete it is, discussion. It is, it is, in fact, I mean, our complete, right, we article. had the right to change it. Theoretically, right? if we get an article from, by majority vote of a multiple member body, we should put it on as it is. Right. The motion made may be different, either by, by anyone who makes the motion or anyone who wants to amend the motion. But. What's your concern? What is my concern? <sighs> sort of the purity of the process. Not having articles that are sort of dangling out there with people wondering why is this person putting uh, an article on the warrant when they don't have a right under the charter to put an article on the warrant. They don't have a guaranteed right. They don't have a charter. guaranteed right under the charter. Correct. Well, but then is it sufficient, as Peter suggested, to add more words? That wasn't my suggestion, but there's nothing wrong with observation. Yeah, you're, yeah. Sorry, you're off. Don't mean to put words in your mouth. <laughs> What's the pleasure of the board? The charter speaks for itself. <laughs> but then the idea is to take the charter literally, and the police chief does not put articles on the warrant. Well, actually, no, because it says, let me, right. You know, right from the charter, that um, we shall receive any, at any time petitions addressed to us which request the submission of a matter to the town meeting which are filed by any elected town officer. Okay. 
or there's elected though, which is kind of interesting because town officer is defined as uh, a person having charge of an office or a department. But it conflicts elected? with elected. Right. There, yeah. Which, which, you know, but elected is specific. Right, right. Yeah. So, so there are very few department heads that, that are elected. Yeah. Th that's correct. I'm moderator. That's correct. Technically. Who are they? Yeah. Yeah. Is it town clerk? <laughs> no. Town moderator? Clerk's yeah, town, town moderator. Clerk's appointed. Huh? huh? The clerk's appointed. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so some, just a moderator. Yeah. Anyone else? Just a moderator. Just a moderator. Okay. <coughs> okay, so how about for this warrant? For, for editorial we purposes, we can right. put, we'll you know, BOS put, you know. in parentheses and then whoever requested, because I think it serves a useful purpose if some department or somebody specifically wants a warrant and we act article and we acquiesce to let people know the source of the article. So, yeah, I agree with you, Peter. I think the public is better served by having, parenthetically, who requested the article okay. than just saying all articles are board of selectmen articles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Because by definition, we put them on unless it falls into one of those three categories, the petition, the Well, they go on because we voted to yeah. put them on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cause they, right. if we don't vote, they don't go on there. That is correct. So is the interpretation is that by virtue of our voting to put them on the warrant, they become Board of Selectmen endorsed? Not necessarily. Uh, okay. No, because may, the ones from the elected past, officials. The board has voted to put articles on the warrant at the request of a department head or somebody. Even though we were ambivalent as to its support, we said, well, it, you know, it deserves a hearing. We'll put it on the warrant. Well, I mean, we, we have also put articles on and we have voted unfavorable. I mean, that's why there's, the, there's those lines. I Two mean, steps. Right. I so mean, the they wouldn't ask the, our the opinion The sense of the board it. is that we're not going to tighten up the process for warrant articles. I mean, I, I wouldn't object to clarification in the warrant. You know, Board of Sackman on request from Chief of Police or, or by request. Mm -hmm. Just fact of the matter is, you, you know, those types of articles are by his request. So, I mean, I think the question you're asking is, is if the chief of police comes to a, well, let me ask you this way, is in the history of the BOS, have we ever been presented with a department head's article and not put it on a warrant? Yes. Okay. In my, in my tenure, yes. Yes. Okay. Not often, but yes. He okay. said, no, you know, we don't so want So I this. don't think we should, you know, I'm not. It's not I automatic. I think we should be, right, exactly. You know we should be allowed that yeah. ability yeah, to actually, say Yeah, actually, I no. remember an article not too many years ago that uh, the former town planner had submitted to this board, and we had just had a very similar article at a prior town meeting, and, and we voted not to include that on, on the warrant. Right. So that's an example just fairly recent that, that right. where we did that. Right. You're smiling, Mike. That, that no, no, I'm not that. smiling. I'm, I'm, I'm grimacing. <laughs> Looks like a happy grimace to me. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see my grimace. There's no doubt. Okay, so the sense of the board is that we will not tighten proceedings. Okay. Discussion of special town meeting procedures. What procedures... Well, um, I think right now, this evening, I think what um, they need to do is open the special town meeting warrant. Oh, you mean in, that went in the paper today. for the, uh, you, you mean in discussion of this specific special town meeting yeah. for uh, the for zone change. Town. Yes, you, you need to open the special uh, town meeting warrant. Okay, but wait a minute, the, the, the antecedent requirement is to discuss the procedures. Okay. Um, so what are the procedures we're discussing? Well, the intention of uh, that's Just on to, open to discuss warrant. today's warrant uh, because of the time constraints, and I believe I sent everyone an email on, on mm -hmm. the very tight timeline we mm -hmm. have for this. Um, <coughs> we have but 45 days from the date we received the 
petition. Now, procedurally, you mentioned earlier that any additional articles to go on that have to have 100 signatures? Because if petition they... Petition articles. Any petition articles, articles okay. need 100 si signatures since this is a special town meeting warrant. Okay. Uh, annual town meetings require only 10, but specials require 100. Okay. So uh, an article that, that uh, someone wishes to put on uh, by uh, petition may be very difficult to gather the signatures for because this is a, a short time frame. Um, I suppose I could also submit it to the board and, and uh, you could sponsor it at, at uh, another party's request, even if it's not a town governmental Let's not party. open that door. Let's okay. not no. go there. Scratch that. And, and, no. and I, I would discourage. Erase yes. that no. tape. <laughs> uh, <laughs> erase that. Well, no. I mean, there's, there's nothing, uh, I suppose uh, I, I come from a community, we never did petition articles, or very rarely. Uh, everything went through the board and was approved or not. Okay, so what we need tonight is a motion to open, to open the warrant, warrant for the special town meeting. Yes, it must be held on the 30th on the of 30th. March. It must remain open for a minimum days. of five business days. Five days. For the special, yes. Okay. We only have 45 to actually okay. hold the meeting. Okay. Um, so it just to recap your email to us, 45 days of receipt of the petition. The petition was received on Tuesday, February 16th. Correct. The meeting must occur by Friday, April 2nd. But that is a Friday. It's a difficult day to get people right. out. So Difficult to obtain a quorum on a Friday, so we have tentatively scheduled the meeting for Tuesday, yeah, That's the March spring, spring annual 30th. No, March 30th is the special. Is the special. special. March 30th, okay. So then your email goes on. Working backwards, we have. Application of notice in the TNG would be February 22nd. Yeah, today. Today, um, today we open the warrant. Uh, you're suggesting that we close and sign the warrant on March 1st. Correct. Um, mm -hmm. A week from today. Special meeting. Uh, warrant will be posted on the 2nd. And um, then FinCom hearing will be scheduled. FinCom has to schedule a meeting. As soon as they're the done with their hearing, you'll need to set. Uh, uh, th there's the planning board roughly on the 10th uh, yeah and tentatively there's a date I think for the 15th for this board to hear the article and then publish it the next day to make the two-week publication uh, posting deadline for the uh, for the warrant and, and then the 16th annotated warrant with comments and recommendations to be posted we posted in the national meeting on the 30th. Yeah, we'll, as, your, we'll, as your recommended schedule. We'll, we'll post the draft warrant with with which will be complete, but we'll not have the annotations and votes on it. We'll prepare the final warrant as soon as this committee um, hears the uh, has the hearing. Well, okay. actually, on the 16th, I think we'll be able to after you guys meet on the 15th. On the 16th, the warrant should be finalized with the planning board recommendation and the board of selectmen recommendation if it all closes on the 15th that night. And then it could be a complete packet. It'll be all uh, Tracy will have to do is, is yeah, we can add do your a work vote. in progress, like while we're here. You, you can add that yeah. vote that night and sign it, and it'll be posted the next day. Okay, so. So we're make meeting the 1st of March to close and sign the warrant. Correct. We're meeting on the 15th to hold a hearing on the warrant. Public hearing. The, the public hearing and vote whether to support or, or uh, not support the article. Okay. And then or the, articles. Then on the 30th will Is be the actual special actual meeting. Final. Yes. Public hearing. What public hearing are you referencing? Um, there'll be a planning board public right. hearing, okay. and what we did was because it's um, it, it's going to be a hot topic. We've piggybacked off the planning board public hearing notice to save money and also allow this board to have a public hearing with the residents in this community, so they know what's going on. It's a different day, though. We're but we don't have we don't it. have public hearings on the warrant. You don't. You wouldn't on a zoning, but this is as a courtesy because we're tat we're piggybacking off the planning board's. Um, um, public hearing notice because you will have to provide a recommendation you for the warrant. We make recommendations, exactly. yes, right. but we don't typically have public hearings. No, you, you don't have to, correct. In this instance, 
it was a freebie, so we're going to have a public hearing. Um, well, you well, don't have to do it as a, a hearing. You, you don't have to open it as an official public hearing. But well, if it's advertised as a public hearing. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And it, that's done already? Yeah, and in the last mm -hmm. couple of zoning amendments, you have done public hearings. Well, we, we had to get the ad in today. The last couple of years, or last couple of meetings, you have had public hearings. We had to get the ad in today, or to make all of the timelines. Uh, unfortunately, <coughs> the charter has a list of events that must uh, normally happen before a town meeting. Yeah and they follow one after the other, including finance committee meetings, uh, publications. The state law says 45 days from receipt of the petition, and that just compresses everything. So it really tightens up our deadlines and makes it very difficult to get everything done in that short time frame. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion then that we open the warrant for a special town meeting to be held on March 30th, uh, 2010, uh, with the warrant to be closed. Close of business, is that our Close of business. On Close of business mm -hmm. on March 1st, 2010. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Hutton Street leaves. So we disposed of that yep. earlier. Oh, yes. yes. So regular session minutes for January the 11th. These are the ones we just received. Uh, they were emailed out earlier today. Yeah. Okay, yes. but just today. Yeah. Okay. I was okay with the, uh, the minutes as written. Does anybody else have a chance to review them or not? Yeah. On that discussion on the Lamaya property, um, I, I requested that we get in writing from the Conservation Commission their, their alleged support of this. Do we have that? I have a meeting cancellation. Uh, okay. We're still waiting for that. We have that right. requested to them. They, did not, they haven't met since our last meeting. Um, actually, my room, we went, I have a, under different. Different minutes? No, under different, the next thing on our agenda. <laughs> Other business? Yes. Okay. The, um, the <laughs> settlement you. agreement with Holbrook Farm Estates, it says second read, the board reviewed and revised the settlement agreement. The town manager will coordinate execution. But did we vote on the agreement? No, we didn't. There was no, there was no formal vote. It was the consensus of the board, I believe, to move forward with the changes. Uh, True. But we would need a vote, wouldn't we? I think it was that that was over $100,000, so that vote went to town meeting. I think you already did that, right? Over, yeah, because you had to, anything over $100,000 had to be authorized through town meeting vote for them for you to. Um, no, you, they're talking about the settlement agreement. Right. And that was the, the language on the settlement agreement. Yeah. Oh, do you want to approve the agreement or the, or the, the, they the function of the. They wanted to approve the actual agreement, and <coughs> it. it, it um, it was my mistake. If you wanted to see it again, I actually uh, negotiated with the attorney for the changes he requested and executed the agreement. I thought that was the, the will of the board, but. Uh, I, well, I agree. It, I, I, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. clear that we were in agreement. Okay. On, I don't know if it. If, I know. I don't think we if voted. If you wanted to see it again, I, if that's we my needed mistake. to vote, then we need to vote. If we didn't need to vote, I'm happy. Um, I think we need to vote, I think but you should I vote don't then, think there's no. an objection to the fact that well, um, there's nothing we could do because it was, but I think that would have, okay. But we can't vote tonight because it's not no. on the agenda. So we'll put it on the next We'll, we'll okay. put it on. I, uh, my mistake, it was my my understanding that, that I should have moved forward, but you're, you're correct. If it wasn't voted on, it should have, uh, that should have happened. 
first. Uh, they were amenable to the changes requested by the board. <coughs> well, if we've got minutes documenting that we are in agreement with the language and, and the agreement's already executed, does this vote board need to reaffirm our previous statement that we agree with the language? I mean, what if we say we don't agree with the language? Oh, well, <laughs> it's, it's already signed. It's right. signed contract. Mm -hmm. But it says the board reviewed and revised the settlement agreement. Right. Mm -hmm. there and the town manager will coordinate execution. You know. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we can look I did. Yeah. Uh, it, it's my mistake if there wasn't a final vote. Um, I, I walked out of the meeting thinking that you were going to take our changes, update the language and bring and, it and, back and, and, oh, oh, so, no my understanding was and if you can get agreement from from their council to execute that's exactly our language, what, that is exactly what happened then I was okay with it so yeah the trouble is anyone reading this yeah no. doesn't know that yeah, I understand. <laughs> right. and amend, the, amend the minutes <laughs> no, no, amend the minutes and that yeah. resolves yeah the, the issue. yeah you right. can yeah We'll coordinate execution of, of the agreement if acceptable as revised. Yeah. Execution of agreement as revised. Of agreement as revised. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I, I didn't think we were going to be taking this up again after we walked out of that meeting. I thought we had consensus on the language. Yeah, and I, I did too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. There's only so many times you can go back and revisit something. I mean, you got to move forward. So, motion to accept the minutes of January 11 as revised. So moved. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. February. Do we have February 8th? Um, no. Next, next time. Okay. Did you all see the notice from Joe Deliso that he's having another one of his meetings in Millbury? It's Thursday, Thursday at 8 o'clock. Who? I'm out of town. Who? The Blackstone Valley Economic Development Council. Uh oh. Uh -oh. I, didn't see that. I, I sent it out late this afternoon to everybody. Okay. Reminding all the members of the 11 town group that he's doing this and that we it sent Senator Moore the letter regarding um, conditional acceptance of moving the cherry sheet money to the Economic Development Council and reminding the 11 towns that they really need to weigh in on it, positive or negative. I've had a discussion with, uh, what was the lady from Douglas? Paula Brulant. Paula yes, Brulant. she called me and uh, asked about it and I and she asked me to speak at the meeting <coughs> um, so my feeling is it's it's all well and good for the municipalities to step up to the plate but this is a it is a uh, partnership and I think some of the private businesses also have to uh, step forward and finance this uh, this endeavor um, and she told me something interesting we are the only group that's being financed with public money. Most of these uh, chambers are being, uh, economic development groups, are being privately funded. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't think it's bad that there's a private-public partnership, but it has to be a partnership. Uh, you'll notice the, the moderator or leader this week is Hal Davis, and he's the one that's pushed that sort of 43D, is it? Uh, business development uh, mm -hmm. entities, yeah. which we had suggested that South, Ex South Uxbridge Business Association mm -hmm. consider as a way of self-funding their infrastructure improvements. The bids, business improvement districts, yeah. yes. Um. I mean, again, I find it interesting that we have two large business proposals coming into Uxbridge, and both of them have come in without this 11 town economic development 
I mean, I still That's believe that government agencies right. do the, not. I don't bring see any us getting a bang anywhere. for buck for this. Yeah. It's, it's once, once Joe DeLiso is up and running, you'll see all sorts of things. At a hundred thousand dollar a year salary, that's funded on our tax dollar money. I'm sorry, I, I just I don't think that we're going to get a benefit from. Well, that. we could get a few more blacksmith shops. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, lumber and ice establishments. <laughs> You've seen my revisions. You know that that will, will I hope, be a thing of the past. That there will oh, be also, a, have a you spoken broader... with uh, Wickstrom and Lutton about what they're doing with that? I haven't. Uh, uh, Dr. Lutton has not been well lately. Understood. Um, Mark had that other issue I, I'll put on, on the next agenda. I, I, I should have spoken to, to that in my manager's report of what he uh, was requesting. I'll do it next time. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, special means for employee status. But since we, I, we yeah, I need, that I need to understand that better. But we all need to understand it before we. I'll get something in writing. Talk about it. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll provide some uh, background documentation. Okay. Final article. Letter to Governor Patrick. I made some of the changes. I made the changes that everybody requested the last time. I would just change the first paragraph, second line. Oh my God! This no. is the second time you changed that. It's, it's three words. Okay. Do you have our colleague Kevin Giro's comma? I think out the words in light of. Okay. So what, what you want to follow up on? His comments, some of the points he made at the that. State of the Commonwealth address in his speech. Right. Let's take the word in light of. Okay. Oh. Just to make it read better. Comma. Some of the points, okay, yeah, sure. Right. Do you want to follow up on his comments? And your inquiry. speech at the MMA. Okay, what gotcha. made in his speech. Right. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's the tax on nursing home residents? That's, uh, if, if you're paying your own way, yes. you get levied the room tax by the state. Whereas if you're on the dole, so it's a way of this for the for the state to get that last bit of your money yeah, okay. when you're on your deathbed. Okay, so I wasn't clear what what it referred to here. And remember that that was one of the things that uh, when Yahimchek was running against Senator Moore. Yeah, that was one of his uh, points that he kept uh, raising. Yeah, um, is, is saying Senator Moore being on the health subcommittee yeah. should have more sympathy for for folks, and, and and Moore kept dancing around that one. Uh, second page, third paragraph, yep. last line. He says, leave towns increasingly unable to meet their minimal obligations. Should that be, me, be minimum? Wait a minute. Which page? I'm sorry. Second page. Second page. Third paragraph, last line. Okay. Yeah. Minimum? Yeah. It says minimal, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you meant to say minimum. Minimum, yeah. And last paragraph. Third line from the bottom, at the beginning, says it says on staff of on it should or, should be all on or on retainer. Third line up from the bottom. On staff or yeah, staff. or on retainer. Yeah, that should be an or. And last page, last paragraph. It says leadership is needed from the top, sir. That sounds like something I would write rather than something you would write. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm honored. But usually when I write those things, I say, gee, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I've been told by, that the governor tends to be kind of prickly at times. Yeah. Okay. As evidenced by the first paragraph. <laughs> so do you want to just drop that? Or? It's, up, it's up to you. I don't okay. I, if it were me, I'd just leave out that signature. word. Your yeah. signature. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to co-sign. I, oh, I, was, I tried to tone it down and you put it back in. So. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was taken oh. out last time. Um, and on that, that vein, I, I, I didn't suggest you, you take this out, but I don't know if Kabuki dance like should be capitalized. Where was that? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Which one? I don't know if Kabuki Paragraph dance about the Kabuki should be capitalized. dance on uh, Beacon Hill. Oh. Oh, um, yeah. Sound and fury and posturing, like and it's all just a big charade. I, I think it should be. Um, I know, I think like yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've had that for years and yeah, years. I do like that. Both words. Spend, it's good imagery, right? though. Mm -hmm. Were you just saying dance? Okay. 
Are we all going to sign? Or? I'm, ta I'm taking yeah. the sir out again. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want a motion? Yes, please. Uh, motion to have the chair sign the February 16th. <coughs> Can I change the date? We're going to change the date okay. to whatever yeah, date. February 2010 letter to Governor Patrick with recommended changes. Yes. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Other new business? Yes, please. Um, regarding the uh, ballpark proposal idea on Menden Street, um, could we have as either the, um, the next time they want to come before us or subsequent at, right after that, if we could have a um, kind of like a public hearing, allow the public to come forward and voice their opinion on that issue um, on an off night. It was recommended by um, a citizen who called me and felt that that would, you know, it was, it was an issue that he <coughs> felt needed to um, be discussed outside of a regular BOS meeting um, for issues that I'm open um, to that I mean do, do you want a hearing or just a meeting we have to put a legal notice in for oh I'm sorry just a meeting just for people to come forward and voice their concerns about the project um, okay so we need, we need to get out some eye to people who are going to have this right. and let them, let them know what the subject matter is correct yeah. right sure. and um, the recommendation also was that we actually go out and physically visit the site so that we all have an understanding of the dynamics was what the citizen recommended before we had this meetings um, that citizen had actually visited the site himself after well, our meeting it's part of that i think we need to get that letter from the conservation right. commission right. Mm -hmm. we and also should um, nail down the issue of whether that is conservation land or not because according to what Steve O'Connell said the deed doesn't say that now I don't know if the deed has to say that but in all the discussions that that um, I'm aware of regarding the Pope Pond land and that's part of the Pope Pond land that it was turned over to the Conservation Commission in fact when it came when we're talking about the Pope Pond property remember the town meeting vote was to we have to get special legislation to allow the rental of the conservation land so we need to resolve that issue and the citizen also recommended under that that when we have it if we invited members from conservation and um, recreation um, to the meeting also so that the citizens had an opportunity to address questions and answers to uh, members of the different boards that would be weighing in on this instead of having to go to each of the board's meetings if we could kind of make it easier for the citizens to come in and um, have kind of a, a roundtable discussion similar to what we do you know every once in a while where we put school finance and BOS all together something similar on this issue I'll have to search the title to see if there's any restrictions on the deed itself and I'll see if I can identify anything. It's a little harder to go through uh, town meeting votes since there isn't any uh, any objective records of town meeting votes. And that's something when Kelly has time, I'm going to have her prepare uh, a book that just shows what town meeting actions were taken and when. Uh, but that requires searching every warrant. But the title search should not, not be terribly difficult. Yeah. Can you do that from the but office? Before we even move to the point of the having, account, having a joint meeting, access to mm -hmm. I'm, I'm with Peter and I, I want to see right. the recommendation oh, yeah, right. from conservation because mm -hmm. we're okay with this proposed use of this land. You know, um, <coughs> so in conjunction with determine whether it, it, it does fall into the conservation area or not and then sign off from conservation committee that they're okay with this, everything else is almost a moot point. You know, if, if, it, if it seemed to be under the control of the Conservation Commission and they're not in favor of the, of the action, then right, right, I agree with you. Right. right, I just throw right. it out there as something that yeah. we should and if it you know, keep in the mind. Control, then they have nothing to do with it. Right, <laughs> yeah. right, right. right. Yes. And that that would account for all of Pond Land. 
Because right. it was right. all one parcel. Right. 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 Just one thing you know, you mentioned, uh, viewing the land. I would encourage anybody that, that it is still private property, so don't enter the land. If you want to see it, you have to go, from, from, right, go, you have to go through. Right, right, and exactly. Look down. Right. 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 Is it posted? Actually, it's not posted. Um, if it's not posted, sure, there's then, a, uh, if it's not posted, then uh, yeah. they've well, put a barrier the up since the last time I was there. Yeah. Right, you can just go up on the bolt field and look around. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it isn't particularly safe. There's uh, uh, quite a bit of old equipment there, so. It might be attacked by the old equipment. Well, I mean. <laughs> I've heard of that, you know. You know the old attack by the old bulldozer. Construction yeah. trucks. <laughs> I mean, you know, there, there's stuff to trip over. There are tripping hazards. If you have children, there, it's an attractive thing to play on and perhaps get hurt on. It's. So, but you're not, the attorney you're not, you're, 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 in there. Like, you're not looking. At, view it from the from the ball field. You're not looking not at too the, close the, to the existing edge. gravel pit. <laughs> you're looking at the gravel edge. They the want ball from pit. us. Yeah. So you go to the edge of the ball field and look down and see, you know, how many feet you're going to drop this thing. You know? Right. Any other things to discuss, Peter? Yeah, just a couple of things. Peter's got um, his law book. That always makes me afraid. It's um, is it, is my understanding correct that again we're not, we're going to take no real part in the budget process for this town meeting? We'll take no. again. Last year we took very active. Yes, very active last year. Anyway, and when, I would anticipate the same when, thing this year. When do we do that? When they deliver those five budget books to us, right, Peter? Okay, so but we, so we're not setting any priorities as to what we want. And so I noticed that the the proposed budget so far is for no money in the town school building maintenance account. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, I know it makes it more difficult for us to now say we want that, which, yeah. right, which. The charter says the town manager prepares a budget in consultation with the Board of Selectmen. Oh, we were kidding. We don't want our books. Well, they're here. Your, your homework, Ben. <laughs> No, but I thought we asked not to get individual well, we're gonna, books. Are we going to get those electronically this year? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to uh, pass out a couple of books this evening. Uh, um, and then what we did. We made 20. How many did you make? 18? Um, probably about like 15. Um, so you see, I'm not impressed when the. I thought we were only going to give one finance, finance director we moans yeah, and groans about the onerousness of his clerical yeah. burdens. Actually, Tracy, <laughs> yeah, you did it. Tracy did it. And but still, the point is that we're, we're supposed the to be there members. at the beginning, not at the right. end. Right. I, I, I agree with you, Peter, because I, I mean, they literally just got finished up today. Um, I, you want it? You don't want one. I want an electronic want. copy. Yeah, yeah I want electronic too. What we have is by tomorrow afternoon, um, we'll have electronic <laughs> copies available. <laughs> Because we really don't have 16 books completed. If yeah, we need uh, to, yeah, we no. would, but it's a Save lot of Save the paper. Work. Save the paper. Yeah, no, give us electronically. Uh, yeah, I, I will say, too, I, I really appreciate... I'll take... Uh, Mike will <laughs> take the only one. But, Mike will take our yeah, copy. But, um, I really do appreciate the effort you've made in the last couple of weeks to scan the reading file. Yes. That's been tremendously helpful to get Great. that by email as opposed to having to come in to, to hit the file. So I, I, I really appreciate that. I hope we continue that practice. Oh, I agree. Um, so by tomorrow, there will be a thumb drive available for you if you want an electronic copy and what will happen it, it's just too big to email right yeah. so you'll get a thumb drive with with the whole book and then thereafter if a budget is updated it's be small enough to email it to just, you. just the thumb, drop it on your thumb drive bring your laptops in use the thumb drive the laptop at the meeting okay. um, we you trying to get a, um, a loan or laptop from the Board of Health so if anybody needs a laptop um, we can see if we can find another one kicking mm -hmm. around to use if you want an electronic copy of the budget and you want to look at it at the meeting. So, oh, 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 so okay. instead no, of no. having a hard copy, you'll have but, a thumb yeah, drive. It's a laptop. Okay. It's not a little handheld thingy that you can't <laughs> Well, Peter's still running, to hide behind. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's still running DOS at home, though, right? So That's it, right. Yeah, <laughs> right. Have a window. Uh, yeah. We can run, walk you through it, though. <laughs> I run DOS on my right. Aptiva. IBM Aptiva. Okay, the, the other... Okay, but on your on your point of that though, but I mean, 
just so I understand the process, I mean, the town manager has provided his budget. We need to have it each of the department budgets. But if we wanted to, let's say, take $5,000, I mean, I'm just pulling an arbitrary number, but if we wanted to take $5,000 from every department and put it over into a school building maintenance account so that we start building that. It's harder to do once to every do department has already been told this is what you're going to have. Right. Yeah. Well, this budget is a conservative budget. We've, we've minimized, we've taken the lowest reasonable figures for revenues and the uh, increases for costs are, have been fairly uh, uh, liberal in the sense we've, we've forecasted at the top end. It, it is a conservative budget. So we are hoping that there'll be some additional revenues available. Uh, from where? Simply from as projections come in. For example, uh, initially we had uh, projected higher health insurance costs than ultimately we saw. As we get better and better estimates as, as time goes forward, uh, if things are looking better than we thought and money becomes available, that will be, then there will be decisions to be made. If there's 50 or $80,000 available, you know, what you want to dedicate that to, be it the school town building maintenance fund, be it a capital project, something along those lines. Okay, so we're not getting hit with the, on average, 34% increase on health insurance no. like the state of California? No, not 34%. Uh, we're looking at about 10% yeah, for Blue Cross Blue Shield and about... Was it 18%? Uh, it's down, I think, to 14% on uh, Fallon. Uh, unfortunately, the school department disproportionately has Fallon, so that's hitting them harder than the, the town side. We tend to have more Blue Cross. Well, hopefully, uh, they'll switch over because I would they don't hope want to they pay. Would. But I, I would have thought an HMO would be cheaper than a... They're both HMOs. They're both, They're both HMOs. HMOs. Okay. Um, initially, they came in at 22%. And David and I considered, or I considered, David said you can't do that, but you can do that, uh, simply eliminating Fallon and, and going to impact bargaining. Uh, I mean, we can change health insurance if we need to, but the requirement is under mass, uh, mass law that we then impact bargain. But Well, the school committee's up for re-contract this year. But what's the impact of giving someone cheaper health insurance that has the same benefits? And, you know, if, if Fallon is, continues to be above the average, we may end up doing that, simply eliminating it and impact bargaining with the unions. Because um, there is no, I mean, the impact is you get cheaper health insurance. So we, we don't have to pay you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't like doing it. I mean, I, I like to cooperate with the unions, but sometimes it's necessary. And I've only done that once in my whole career. And, it wasn't, uh, obviously there was a prohibitive practice charge levied, but it was settled. Do we offer HMO Blue New England or HMO Blue Mass to our employees? Um, I don't know there was a difference. Uh, yes. Uh, unless, unless, unless it is all New England now, uh, but there used to be a difference where if you were HMO Mass, then you were only using networking in Mass, but if you get HMO New England, I think it's then mass. it's the whole, it's all the New England states, so like... No, it's just Massachusetts. Okay, because there is, okay. It's a Massachusetts plan. Okay. Um, it's the same, same plan that's offered through Maya, which is <clears throat> Massachusetts only. Um, I don't know, Fallon is, is wider in scope. We do offer a PPO for people that want to go out of state. It's more expensive. Uh, <coughs> it tends to be picked up by retirees, especially uh, retirees in, in public sa safety or the school department that have the ability to retire before they're 65 and are not eligible for Medicare. Um, the other thing we may want to look at you know, in doing that is well, 
look to see if the New England is uh, cheaper than the PPO for Blue Cross. But also, um, like my father's a, um, he gets his retirement from one of the other cities here in Massachusetts <coughs> with his insurance. And if he leaves the state of Massachusetts, he doesn't get his insurance anymore. I've asked David to look into other options, including uh, the Maya plan uh, through, through uh, the MMA. We looked at it last year. It wasn't to our benefit, but we'll look at it every year. We'll revisit all of these plans every year. Um, typically, it's, it's very difficult to get out of a of Blue Cross option because that's one, been one of the stumbling blocks with the GIC. They don't offer Blue Cross Blue Shield, and that has been a, a big problem for communities to migrate on there. But I, I had about a 20-minute conversation with um, an executive from Blue Cross Blue Shield at the MMA conference, and uh, it looks like it's not even on their radar screen as far as joining uh, the GIC and, and offering. So, uh, you know, that, that's they, – they do, I think, a three-year planning window as far as – those types of decisions. For a reason? Uh, business decision. Yeah. It's not cost effective for them. The, the, they'll make less money on that than okay. offering traditional plans that people find attractive and union, unions are already locked into. Yeah. So. Blue Cross does, and I've spoken to them about it. Uh, they don't offer $5 co pays in the uh, private sector. And, and nobody they simply should. stopped offering them. We would not be required to offer that. We, we're not required to offer insurance plans that aren't available, but uh, they continue to offer those $5 copays. And it's not in their interest and it's not in our interest. $5 copays. $5 copays. <sighs> so crazy. Okay, other issue. Um, <coughs> I don't have. I think at our last meeting I, I touched on the, the zoning board's decision regarding the, the rodeo where they, they, they resurrected an expired uh, pre-existing non-conforming use. Now keep in mind, it was agriculture. The owner wanted it changed to industrial. So the owner's own action made it a non-allowed you know, non use. Now he wants it resurrected. The, the ZBA gave them a, they resurrected that and gave them a special permit. I don't have the decision yet. I, I guess it's still not written up. But there are rules regarding the authority of a ZBA to grant extensions and changes in a pre-existing non-conforming uses. Even though that two-year window has lapsed, they've resurrected it and are enormously increasing it. The basic guidelines under state law are whether the use reflects the nature and purpose of the use prevailing when the zoning bylaw took effect. Two, whether there is a difference in the quality or character as well as the degree of use. And three, whether the current use is different in kind in its effect on the neighborhood. Now the pre-existing use was a golf driving range. It had maybe five or six people at a time hitting golf balls. Not a lot of traffic, not a lot of noise, and, and so forth. Um, this, a, this is um, the, the, the guru's book, by the way, Bomboski's book about zoning. And basically, it's $80 I paid for this stupid book. It's basically a reprint of state law and some other things. But there's also a table on, on court cases touching the, the issue of making a non-allowed use, but pre-existing, but they want to change it, you see? Now keep in mind, the town of Uxbridge, when it changed its zoning bylaw, has determined that any outside commercial recreation is not allowed. That means by definition, any outdoor commercial recreation is a detrimental use. Now, you say, well, that's crazy. Yes, it is crazy, but it's also the law in Uxbridge, and we're bound by that law. So here's a case where uh, someone wanted a pre-existing 
limited to uh, limited general motor vehicle repair, limited motor vehicle repair to general repair. And that was not allowed by the courts. Uh, a new building in an existing gravel pit, not allowed. Uh, tailor to a dry cleaner, not allowed. Small to a larger gravel pit, not allowed. New building at Slaughterhouse, not allowed. Ice plant to a fuel oil facility, not allowed. Dance hall to a restaurant, no, not allowed. New building at a piggery, not allowed. There's already a piggery, the guy wants to put up a new building, not allowed. Uh, gravel pit using improved methods from hand shoveling to machinery, that's allowed by the courts. New building a gas station slash store, no, not allowed. Groceries to a drugstore, not allowed. So in most of these things, not been allowed. So the, the, the rules are very strict. So it's unfathomable to me how the ZBA came to the point where they allowed that change. And the implications for the future in the town of Uxbridge are, are enormous. I would appeal their decision, except I don't have standing. And as, as far as I can see, you need to have standing to appeal a ZBA grant of a um, special permit. But the Board of Selectmen could appeal it. And I think if we have any sense and want to preserve the, the, the use of zoning in the town of Oxbridge, that we should do that. It's a, it's a terrible, terrible decision. I mean, I, because it's not on the agenda, I don't feel it's right to discuss it now. But, but we can discuss anything on the agenda. We can't vote. Okay. But we can discuss anything we well, want. Well, here's something we think of. You made the statement that it was, you know, it's not detriment. I mean, that it is detrimental. I mean, by definition, that's what zoning zoning determines which uses are good and bad. And so, so you're forth. saying it's detrimental areas. because, of, according to the the readings in that book. No, 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 no. Our bylaw prohibits. I understand that, but our bylaw is also going to be back on the Springtown meeting as being changed. So as possibly, hopefully by the end of May, we'll have different bylaws where it may not be. Well, that's true. And I would be in favor of that. There's no reason, as far as I'm concerned, to say that you can't have outdoor recreation in an industrial zone. It right. doesn't I, make sense. Right, it does make but sense. But that's the law. Okay, so is your position because of how it is now, and would you have that same position on May 30th? No, on May 30th, if we change the bylaws, they say fantastic. But this decision, if allowed to stand, sets a precedence as to how the ZBA needs to look at other requests of a similar nature. Keep in mind now, the pre-existing non-conforming use expired, I understand. gone. Right. Years later, after the owner has stopped that use, asked that the town change the zoning from agriculture to industrial. And his complaint now is, gee, this use isn't allowed in this zone. Well, dummy, you asked for it to be changed. But even if it was somebody else who had asked that it be changed, it wouldn't make any difference. So what's the ZBA going to do if somebody has a little mom and pop store and they want to enlarge it, you know, 50 times? Are they going to say no? when they, they're on record is having said, okay, you can go from six people hitting golf balls to this whole list of, of activities that are gonna be 100 times greater in, in traffic and noise and all the other things that, that people might find objectionable in a different context. But uh, how much weight th does a prior ZBA decision have on the ZBA's ability to render subsequent independent decisions? There's an issue that a, a, a person who's unhappy can say your decision is arbitrary and capricious because here are the facts in that case and this is what your ruling is. You went from this to this. Mm -hmm. I'm asking to go from this 
to this, and you're telling me no. But that, that appeal would have to be made in the courts, right? Yes, right. and they'd probably prevail. That's my concern. Nothing's going to happen between now and, and May. I mean, they're not going to build this rodeo in, in two months or three months. I don't know why they went that route, but it's bad for the town and bad for zoning. You think I'm against government. I'm not against government. I'm against stupid and ignorant government. And this is a prime example of that. Well, when they were before us, we had brought to their attention that there was a Springtown meeting or the potential for the special. Yeah, and they didn't want to wait. And they, right, because of financing. So I think that that's probably why they used, took this route. Now, unfortunately- I'm sure they had a reason. Right. But I work for the people of Uxbridge. I don't work for no, the No, no, I understand that. The developer. I mean, I'm not saying that the argument that you're providing, Peter, doesn't possibly have merit. It's just I'm looking at, you know, I understand the point that you're bringing, and what's the chance that this will come back to bite us, and is that more detrimental than appealing this? This business got coming to town, and is that more detrimental to us than something over here that may not happen? No, because I mean, because I see this as a foot, that, that particular, you know, when you say what's Uxbridge's vision in 15, 20 years, to me, I see this as a big opportunity for Uxbridge to put itself on the map. It's kind of like, you know, the, we are sitting in a prime location for recreational <coughs> entertainment for the state of Massachusetts. The, the amount of money that people dump into recreational pastimes is unbelievable. And here we are sitting on a perfect corridor with 495 and 146 and our proximity to the New England states for a, like the gentleman said when he was in here, it's like, you know, you have a fairgrounds. There was a winery just close to here. You know, if, you know, this motocross park goes in. I mean, we could actually have the potential for growth of restaurants and, um, you know, these deluxe campgrounds. There was one in Rhode Island, there's one in Foxborough that are huge attractions. People come from all over to go to these places. We're sitting in a prime area that doesn't necessarily affect our downtown or our residential area because it's out at our highway, but it brings resources into our town. You know, I understand what you make the point about, you know, wealth, creating wealth. This is a different form of wealth, a recreational wealth that we could capitalize on as a town. And by having a business like this come to town is the first, is the first footstep. It, a town for you to look at is a town, Brazelton, Georgia. They took a little old winery and now they have a, um, the family up there put in a winery then they put in a um, racetrack. They do Formula One racing. Um, then they built a strip mall. And I mean, it's taken off. Little town of Brazelton's population and wealth has grown, grown tremendously in the last 10 years. And it's right next to the highway. And it, you know, it, it's contained, but it's made the town wealthy and it, you know, without affecting some of the other areas. You're, you're, you're mixing two different things. What Peter is arguing is that the ZBA ruling is a bad precedent that will do bad things in the future. I, it may. The rodeo thing could go in under any number of other ways other than this. So the idea of appealing a bad decision that creates a bad precedent does not close the door on that particular group coming in and building their rodeo thing in South Hexbridge. It may. If I, the ZBAs, if we appeal the ZBAs mm -hmm. decision, mm -hmm. okay, and therefore, in, let's say for all intent purposes, the ZBAs decision is overturned, the ball rolling on the rodeo could be stopped. You know, their financees may 
could potentially pull out. What I'm saying is we don't know the whole impact of that because we don't know why they felt like they had to take the you, avenue you, they you had. You create a, a situation of doing <coughs> perpetual damage all over the town just to allow one thing to stand in a, in a remote part of town. That precedent could then be applied any number of places in town. Maybe not in the historic district, but outside of the historic district, there are any number of old usages that could be dredged up, and this precedent would allow them to stand. I mean, your next no, neighbor's I, home I, might, right, might have been a bed and breakfast in, in the turn of the century. Okay, and all of a sudden, they're going to cite this and say, you know what? I want to open up a bed and breakfast so you're going to have all the traffic and all the cars and, and people coming and going and crowds and all that kind of stuff next door to your home. You know, I mean, that's the potential. Right, no, and I understand, right, and that's all I'm saying, which is, you know, I'm not saying that his argument doesn't have merit. All I'm saying is, you know, we have to consider both sides. But that by, if we give more weight to overturning this precedent, there is a chance that there could be an impact on that business. And we may choose that it's worth rolling the dice and taking that gamble. All I'm saying is you can't assume that <coughs> you're still going to get the rotary if you all, the rodeo What's if you still job? What's our job? To take our, our the job interest is of the town. Not, yes. Yes, absolutely. Right. Looking at what is work best for the, for the taxpayers, right. work for the people of Uxbridge. You know, Long-term interests. I know. And we, we've had 100 proposals come and go. You want to bring out those nice shiny brochures that Louis Ticino gave us? I absolutely agree. With a agree. great assurance that we're going to have this big shopping center. Remember all those nice, where is it? It's coming. Well, it's coming. Yeah. Right. But At a theater near you. I know, but on that point, right, I didn't make that decision expecting that to come. I made that decision based on what we were going to get at the time. So I understand what you're saying, and that's what we're weighing here. You know, I I'm didn't not, make that I'm decision weighing. on the power me, plant expecting the power to plant to get built at that moment. I was for looking me, at how it was going to have an impact. There's no balance here. A bad decision is a bad decision. And Absolutely. I don't like bad decisions. I want I don't good decisions. Right, and we've made plenty of bad ones. Uh, BJ's, to me, was a very bad decision, especially when they got their abatement this last year, you know? The, 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 the point, though, Jake's and his people came before us. We told them what the issue was. We told them all the ways that they could resolve it, you know, going to town meeting, having to There were any number of ways they could have done it without doing it this way, a, a way that potentially harms a whole lot of different places. Do we know um, how they came up with this idea? I have no idea. Well, remember, Steve O'Connell <coughs> is on the ZBA, right? And wasn't he one of the ones that proposed the thing? Wasn't he there? No? no. I thought he was. No. Okay. Um, but he'll be the engineer, I'm sure, designing some of this stuff. Same way with the um, others and the um, other thing. I don't know. Um, it is just incomprehensible to me that for the possibility we might have some honky donk thing um, that we're going to allow a, a, a horrendous, horrible, horrible decision to well, stand. Then let me, uh, it's going to come back procedure? to bite us. I mean, because if you're, if we have standing, is it, you know, we just file an appeal. File I understand appeal. that, but file is there a time frame involved in it? Yes, we have to file it within 20 days of the, um, or maybe 10 days. It's 20. 20. Because the time say. the decision is given to the, the town clerk. clerk. Yeah. And when was Which the decision given yet. to the town clerk? Once we do it that, hasn't, hasn't been, been yet. yet. Once we do that, everything comes to a standstill, and probably at that point they will say, "Hey, listen." Um, we'll try to change the bylaw. You know, we got a town meeting coming up in May, early May. Why not? It okay. makes perfect sense. Well, if this is something we're going to entertain, in all fairness, we just opened a special town meeting. Call these guys and say, you have until Monday to get 100 signatures to get on the special town warrant. They don't need 100 signatures. We could put it on the warrant. Okay, then we could put it on the warrant for the special town meeting. And then we can appeal that decision and give an opportunity to change I'm not the sure I like to use the special town meeting for that purpose because as I said earlier you know I would like to discourage additional items otherwise they're going to come in out of the woodwork 
but getting 100 signatures or without us putting it on, I don't see coming out of the woodwork. This, to me, I see that as a possible win-win situation. Here, we are preserving our, you know, our zoning into the future, but yet also rectifying the situation that we're, you know, ultimately putting the kibosh on temporarily by allowing at least, at minimum, a 30-day hold. We have and then the, we're uh, giving it to the citizens the to decide also. All right, that's a business. It's in a residential use. It's a pre-existing non-conforming. So under the ZBA scenario, someone could buy that building and say they want to resurrect the pre-existing non-conforming status, but they want to make it much, much larger. They'll, they'll do what was proposed at the town meeting, mm -hmm. buy that land behind it and put a strip mall in there. Make it over. It was a and nice if you look at part. their, their decision—they'd be hard pressed to say no. I mean, it, it's not—it's right. you know, not I, a theoretical thing that the bad things can happen. Right, I, and I'm not saying I disagree with you, <coughs> but I don't understand. I mean, I think that providing this business an opportunity to get on the special town warrant and appealing the ZBA decision is the way that we should proceed with this. Well, I, mean, I, I think it's a courtesy to, to the potential business owner um, that if we are going to uh, appeal this, and we and obviously we'll need to take it up at our next meeting, or actually we can't even take it up until it's, it's filed with the clerks, but that we reach out to that business right away and let them know that this is something that we are considering and that here are your other options is that you may choose to implement to, to still get to the same end game right. without compromising the town's ability to enforce zoning. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. that's a good way of approaching and, and, it. And that's a, that's a reasonable... Again, I have nothing against the gentleman. You know, I think it's foolish to say that you can't have in an industrial zone any outdoor recreation. It just doesn't make sense to me. But that's what the law is. That's why it's so important to read and completely understand zoning bylaws before we vote on them. So even if we don't, we're not able to act on this at the special town meeting, because I, I agree that May is around the corner. Yeah. I mean, May right. is around the corner. I know how these things work. Nothing is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, we should tell them flat out that this is not, um, you know, so prejudicial it's not against, them. against the no. concept of what they want to do. It's simply and plainly, it's not in conformance with the present zoning bylaws. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're naive to think, though, that it will be resolved at the Maytown meeting. I think that that's where we would be in our best interest to, have, to afford them the opportunity of, you know, of knowing about the special town meeting. Well, so let them do it. Let them do it. Okay, the only other thing, um, I happened to hear Charlie Baker, he was on um, uh, that night program that on, on radio, Howie Carr, only it wasn't Howie Carr, it was somebody else. And a caller from Worcester asked him if he's going to do something about the prevailing wage law. And he sidestepped the issue. Of course. I mean, he said, well, you know, that's really not an executive decision, and I'm rather concentrated on some other things and so forth. You know, if I had a choice between an honest-to-goodness, wacko liberal Democrat and a a spineless, gutless, off and on Republican conservative. I take the honest. I'm not a conservative. Uh, well, yeah, uh, I take the honest, wacko liberal. Are, are you are you promoting uh, Arthur Dubois for a governor? <laughs> I, I just take out the wacko part from Arthur out of deference to our, my personal <laughs> relationship. Can I just raise something? Sure. Um, just information more than anything else. 
been doing some research, um, as you all may imagine, on, on the 8th Worcester District and the five towns in, in that district. Um, and specifically was, was looking at kind of where do those towns stand relative to each other as far as the financial situations. Um, four of the five towns are within 0.1 or lower percent of their levy limit. Okay, so, so, so four of the five towns are taxing right up to the max of, of their levy limit, which is, I guess, somewhat of a statement of the times and not necessarily a reflection on, on any, any one individual town. And, and, and looking through the table that I was looking at, there were many, many, many towns um, across the Commonwealth who are right at their le levy limits. Uh, I don't for a second think that that's a good thing. I just make an observation as to, you know, we're not alone as far as uh, when, when we hear that. Uh, the, the, the towns that were not at their levy limit, actually, were, most of them were not towns. They were cities uh, with, you know, tremendous amount of, you know, commercial assets and those types of things that, you know, if they wanted, they could raise their levy limit considerably more. Uh, but so we're on relative same footing as the other towns. What's interesting, though, is uh, relative to new growth, uh, of the five towns, there's, there's uh, Douglas, Dudley, Uxbridge, Webster, and Oxford are in the district. Uh, we are the third largest town. Oxford is bigger and Webster is bigger. Uh, we've had the most new growth uh, in, in addition to our levy limit uh, in, over the last two years. We've, we've had about 800,000, yeah, thousand dollars worth of new growth um, of those five towns. When you say largest, you mean population or yes, land-based yeah, population? population. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Webster's like 17, uh, Oxford's like 13, we're 12 and change, um, and the Dudley and Douglas are much smaller. But um, by a, a fair amount, actually, we, we've had the largest uh, new growth as far as, you know, that, that gets reported to us by the assessor over the last two years. But, but, that, so. but that's not <coughs> that population. It's not population. It's growth in, in physical buildings and so forth. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 I it, meant it, it, when he, she, he was saying the size of the towns. I was asking population. Yes. Right. Yeah. But he's not no, talking, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm he's talking not about talking population. what disaster reports. Right. The, yeah. the, the new the growth, right. you know, the, growth, the, the, the yeah. two and a half percent okay. plus new growth. Right. Our, the plus new growth yes. has been bigger in Oxford over the last two years than any other uh, four towns in the district, which surprised me oh, given yeah. that. Where, where, that where, where is it? Yeah, I know. But unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, however you view it, uh, it, most of the new growth has been in residential real estate, and that tends to carry its own costs with sure. it, yeah. because you know people move into new houses, they have kids, they have and kids. Have to educate them. Yeah, no, I understand. They, they tend to enter the school systems, and and uh, at least in my analysis, it's about 15 to 20 years before a new residential property actually has a, a positive benefit on uh, the town's off. economic si yeah. situation. Yeah. Well, my son has a house in Sudbury. His taxes are $35,000 a year. And the house has been empty for two years. And he's in California. He has uh, a pretty so big house. It's not always. It's <laughs> not always, but this isn't Sudbury. There are a lot of see-through houses. Yeah. in the town of Uxbridge and, I, and other towns too. Yeah. Those are just two numbers that just kind of jumped out at me as, as I was doing yeah. my analysis. Though, the the, the problem we have, it, New England as a whole, is we have a lot of detriments to us because of the frost in the winter. It costs more to build and maintain roads, much more than it does down south. Mm -hmm. Because of the snow and the frost and the cold, you, houses have to be built stronger, which means they're more expensive to carry the snow load and so forth. And all these things add to the cost of doing business in the Northeast. When you couple with that the increased friction added by government, I mean, it's, it's, it's an insurmountable burden. I read somewhere where we're talking about photo cells here, solar panels. The state gave a, what, a $5 million grant to some company to start manufacturing solar panels. It was $70 million to Evergreen 70 Solar. Million. $70 okay. million. They, they become very the successful. to China. Yes. Yeah. Now, people say, oh, we're getting the money, they moved to China. If they didn't go to China, they'd be out of business. It's as simple and plain as that. And 
we, you know, we, we can't do anything about the snow and the cold or the frost. So we have to, to compete, we have to do something in other areas. And we're not doing things in the other areas. So that's all I had. I just wanted to share those two stats okay. with the board. Anything else, or can we get a motion to adjourn? Peter, you have it. No. Nope. Else? No. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh my God! It's before ten o'clock.